o'clock. Uh, first item on the agenda, additions, changes, deletions uh, to the agenda. I don't think we have any. And it's an opportunity for public comment. None today. Um, that you're aware of? No. No. Good question. Um, so the next item on the agenda is consider approving the Black Rock Water Source Development Agreement with the Town of Heinsburg. We've um, been working on this for quite a long time. Um, I think uh, several weeks ago, three weeks ago, or four weeks ago, it was uh, discussed um, at our meeting. And we've had an opportunity to look it over, an opportunity there were questions and answers uh, provided. Um, and so we can open it up for further discussion. I think, Andrea, you had questions, uh, formal questions you submitted. <coughs> Eric, you provided uh, some answers. Do you want to just talk about the agreement? Maybe two minutes of the process and um, you know, where it stands, I guess, at this point, and, and the fact I assume you support it. I do. Um, as well, as you know, being on the, you know, the committee that drafted it, a lot of, a lot of time and efforts gone into, you know, making this work for both sides. Um, I think it's, I think it's a solid agreement and it gets, <coughs> the town, you know, positioned well for, you know, moving forward with, you know, collecting more, uh, more revenues for upgrades we know are coming and expanding the, the town in its growth center. Um, the, uh, <clears throat> what I'd like the agreement to be approved pending, um, the, uh, water test coming back to satisfaction of the, you know, uh, the staff and the state, so basically. The well, well's been drilled, um, and Black Rock has provided a, this agreement, <coughs> working with Heinsberg to um, move forward. Uh, essentially, Heinsberg could take the well over, um, tie it into our existing system. We have mm -hmm. been searching for a new water source. We've yep. spent... A good amount of money looking oh yeah this appears to be a very good source um and black rock would get a percentage of the output mm -hmm. once it's been all permitted and built and everything um is acceptable to the town um i think um i was going to say one more thing about it but um I mean, as far as its location, it's really an ideal location, yes. close to the water treatment facility with an uh, existing right away, uh, so it can be easily piped to it. So I think if we were to search for a well nearby, the location would be an ideal location. Well, that's for actually one. how we found it. We, we, you know, our hydrogeologist and I you know, said, okay, what would be the best spot to look and between the right of way and want to be geographically separated from the current wells but yet you know fiscally close for the, for piping that was you know that was the best spot and lo and behold we found water there I still have a question on the section four that um, I recognize that the two percentages aren't related, mm -hmm. um, but with 36,000 gallons per day of water, mm -hmm. what would that translate into in terms of, of how much um, sewer allocation would they get? And what? The water allocation we policy is, uh, so it's uh, it's the 36 gallons per day is not tied to any particular use. 
Um, so it could be residential, right, 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 right. So, but it, the wastewater allocation, when they apply for that, would need to be tied to some use, right? Right. So that's the, where you you know we can't really compare it. That but, much, that much gallonage in water, yeah, is the equivalent of 171 three bedroom units of, of wastewater. 171 three bedroom units of wastewater. Units. Waste, the wastewater standards are lower in gallons per day than waste right. than water are, and uh, I, I'm not sure why the state does that, but <coughs> they've it, it has been that way since there's been standards. Okay. Um, so uh, so 101, 171 three bedroom units. Yes. Um, or it could well, be congregate so, housing. Or it could be some right. commercial. Right, and, there, and there's different ratios for those, right. but the, right. the easy, you know, the easy conversion is two ten for a three right. bedroom or, or larger right. house. Okay. Um, and that water allocation, though, doesn't necessarily guarantee that they would get all Absolutely 171 not. at once. No. But it, it, there's no limit to the time that that 36 uh, gallons per day exists so we always in terms of redoing our water allocation policy mm -hmm. i think we would need to put some kind of addendum well, to that to okay. make sure that we're always reserving you know once they come online are we how are we going to calculate how much of that continues to be well, um, once it's online they go from the allocable amount to the actual use amount Right, but let's say they don't use that whole 36,000 gallons per day. Uh, you know, they're not going to get put the 171 units in all mm -hmm. at once. Then we have to figure out well, some the, way they of... Still, they still would be um, factored at the state ratios. It, it wouldn't be like, okay, <clears throat> we put in 300, you know, say 20,000 gallons a day worth. But then come back and look and say, oh, they only use 10,000. Right. That's, that doesn't, no. But, but then how are we going to calculate that? Right. I think what Andrea's just sort of saying, when we go to allocate um, water, um, we would have to, there would be an addendum in there that would sort of say, if we went forward with this and they, they uh, were allocated the 36,000 gallons, let's mm -hmm. say, um, there would be an addendum there that says, okay, we have 80,000 gallons to allocate up and we'd say, okay, some of this, some of this, oh, we have to put this aside only because, you know, Black Rock hasn't completed whatever <laughs> development they might be completing. Yep, so I'd agree we would have to do that. Yes, yeah, somehow we're going to have to track it, and it can't be based on what they actually use. I mean, because we would want to subtract the number of units that they're actually allocated. So right. let's say... You know, well, be so it's going to be a mathematical. They're going to be charged something differently, but mm -hmm. we have to have a number that is tied to what the original allocation was. So I think what you're saying is, in the permitting process, if you do a two-bedroom home, that's X amount of gallons, and that's how it would be allocated. Not, and that's how we. And that's how we would everybody. subtract that from the right. thirty-six. Right. That's yeah. How, yeah. That's how. That's how it's done. Anyway. Well, I don't know that we've, we haven't really ever done this before, where somebody's gotten an well, allocation. Well, we, I think we've split, we've they've split allocations before, where they've, they've, they've used parts of it, and then they still have okay. the official amount still left over. Okay. Yeah. The end phase construction. Okay. And, and not only that, but, you know, as it's, you know, the allocation's out there, and not completed and not turned on, there's also holding fees that are coming in. Those, right. those are real, that's real dollars to us. Right, so that's, but, but we aren't putting any holding fees on this 36 gallons per day. Why was that? Well, it's not in the agreement. It just says it's they're part, getting it. It goes with. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I mean it, it authorizes them 36,000 a day. Right. It, doesn't, it doesn't pay for it. Okay. okay. You know, it gives them, it, all this does is give them a leg up in the process. Mm -hmm. It doesn't, you know, okay. change the pro how doesn't they mean pay that for they, it. They still have to go through the permitting. Correct. And that holding fees. Right. Okay. All right. Yep. 
but when they, they when they go to get water allocated, they don't have to look at the policy. Here's the policy. They're going to say, okay, you, you know, you you have water allocated. Yep. Right, but we still would. I mean, it still needs to kind of follow. I mean, it can't all that thirty six thousand gallons can't all go to commercial because in our allocation policy that, that's the drb would be right well yeah. we we say how right. many you're right you're right goes right. to commercial versus residential we have the majority of it in that district for residential right so right, right. Okay. yep all right any other questions or concerns Alex or Ben, did you have anything to add? Or? No, I, I think this is just the opening salvo of, of to get us to the next step. And then after that, there will be lots more conversations about phasing and development right. of the water system and yeah. oh, I, I, yeah. associated wastewater improvements that need to happen probably yeah. for this mm -hmm. to be fully utilized and right. all of that. Right. Um, I did have a question. Um, sure. The well itself is not within the existing easement. It's not. There would have, we would have to so talk we need about, an extra, we have to talk need about moving easement. it from there to there. Yeah, yeah. It's, so, it's close. Yeah. Right, but it it's a little ways off. Might be 100 feet off. Yeah. Okay. So we would, the dedication document that we'll prepare that <coughs> the town would receive, we would come in all at once. So we're going to come in with a preliminary plat application, an allocation request, and dedication documents for the well and the, any related access easements, utility easements, and sort of drop that all on the respective desks all on the same day. So that's how that would all flow. So we're essentially, the same day you're giving us the allocation, we're giving you the well and related easements. Excellent. Makes sense. Okay. So I'll, I'll make a motion. I'll make a motion to approve the water source development agreement with Black Rock Construction. Add the, upon successful, the water testing. Yeah, the testing coming back, yeah. But to upon, staff satisfaction. Upon satisfactory test results from yep. of the water. And, and that would be, Eric, you're the one who would look right. at that and say that. I'll look that at that, that's... make sure it's within standards, and give okay. it the thumbs up or thumbs down. Yep. I'll second that. And I noticed there was some changes in terms of between flow and yield. And those what you saw at the last meeting. And I just put yeah. the red line okay. just to remind you again, the, our attorney, attorney, just to make it okay. clear, yeah. more yep. clear. Yep. 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 Okay. Um, so we have the motion with the added um, clause uh, after testing, which we expect within a week or two. To get the testing we're gonna, results. We're gonna retest the, 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 the previous testers weren't well. We'll just say they're not professional samplers. Okay. So we're gonna, we're gonna reshoot it. So how long do you think that will take? Roughly, it doesn't really. Three weeks, probably. Okay. So there was a test done, and it. And <coughs> no, it was a case. It, it was sample contamination that didn't fly. So, they, you know, it was bad. Yeah. It. Well, okay. it takes training to sample stuff. Yeah. And these guys weren't. So. Val, you got the motion? You're good? Okay. All those in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 Andrea? Aye. So the motion's passed. None. Everybody voted aye. Excellent. Uh, very good. So thanks for the hard work. Yeah. Thank you. Can you make sure you sign in? The uh, the, te the testing will be done by Endyne Labs in, in Williston. But who's, who's, who's coming in? The sampling. the sampling will be done by me. That's what, <laughs> part of getting this all done and with that caveat is fine because I really want Eric to be in charge of the sampling. Uh, the, and that way we aren't back here with any questions at mm -hmm. any point and Eric's on point. So. He does the work, I get the bill. That's how it will. Flow. And what happened before? Well, the, 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 the initial the test was fine. Did it. Oh. Well drillers. Okay. So they, know how, they know how to make a hole in the ground. But. Yeah. So they pulled the sample. Yes. OK, item four, uh, unified planning work program proposals. 
for select board consideration. Alex? So I think there are three, kind of three, um, proposals to consider. Um, do we want to go at each one individually? And Alex, do you want to? Sure, I can walk you through them. Sure. Uh, so the, the UPWP, or Unified Planning Work Program, is the Jim County Regional Planning Commission's uh, way of plotting out their work for the, the next fiscal year. So fiscal year 19 that starts in July. And they solicit uh, requests uh, for work programs from their member municipalities and other nonprofits. So this is our opportunity to get on their work plan and get them to help us with some projects that we think are important. Uh, so mm, a lot of the money is tied to transportation related projects, but it's not the only thing that we can leverage uh, their work in. So in any case, uh, I, Andrea and I, Andrea being our RPC rep, chatted a bit about various project ideas and um, uh, Richard Watts, uh, who is a community member and active uh, at the university on transportation related matters, uh, got together with Jonathan Slayson, who's on our development review board and is a transportation consultant, and, and they had an idea for a project. Uh, so the three that you see uh, are two of them are ideas that Andrea and I batted about around, and then the other one is one that Richard and Jonathan sort of came up with and chatted with with Andrea and I about. So the first first one listed in the memo is uh, to to hire an engineer to come up with some preliminary plans and a construction cost estimate for what seemed like fairly minor improvements to the to the intersection right outside this building, the Route 116 Charlotte Road intersection. That's a traffic signal, and as part of the Hannaford traffic study, uh, their engineer recommended changing the phasing so that uh, the Lampman's exit and the Charlotte Road got a green light at the same time instead of having them go at separate times, increase the efficiency of the intersection. Um, that requires a little bit of modification to the crosswalk in front of the Lampman's exit. And the state was unwilling to modify that signal phasing until that crosswalk relocation was done. So it, it involves moving a little bit of sidewalk, moving a crosswalk signal post. There is some site work that would need to happen. Back in 2014, um, our previous town administrator got an estimate to come up just to do the design work. And that was um, about $12,000. We never did it. Um, Hannaford has agreed to and is required under their uh, their Act 250 approval to, to to make this improvement. But as we all know, the Hannaford project has has been stuck and stalled due to a court uh, appeals for a long time, and there's no certainty that it'll ever happen at this point. It might, but uh, so. To me, this seems like the most important project. It's not very expensive either, so the required local match is something we can easily handle out of the um, the planning and zoning budget for next year. Um, the only the only hitch is that two things: one, that potentially Hannaford would cover this, and we could be spending money on something that they will be spending money on at a later date. But again, we don't know when that's going to happen. And two. Um, it does seem like such a minor thing. It'd be nice to just throw the money at the actual improvement and not study it to death. Um, but Andrea spoke with the RPC staff. Uh, they'd been helping us. They had been sort of uh, mediating discussions between us and VTrans several years ago when I think it was Joe and I met with uh, VTrans staff and said, can't you just, the box is right over there. Can't you just change the signal timing? They wouldn't do it. Um, anyways, Christine Ford at the RPC just emailed today to say that she'd spoken with VTrans and they felt that additional study probably was necessary in order to make the project go, that we couldn't just get them to do it. Um, so. Well, I think it's, it's important to know that they already have it listed on what's called the MTP. So it means that they, They've already like agreed that this is a project to happen. So I think this cost estimate, it it may not actually be that much. <clears throat> Might I mean, come in I less. think once we have direct conversations with the VTrans staff, it may end up being less, hopefully. But it does um, sound from Christine's yeah. message today that that this 
she said it would be a good idea to, to do this as a placeholder, at, at, if nothing more, um, in the UPWP to help push it along. So that's the first one. Uh, the second one is a more uh, comprehensive assessment of the 116 Mechanicsville Road intersection. Um, there is a recommendation in, in the Route 116 scoping study that happened a couple of years back, as well as our official map, um, to uh, install a crosswalk across 116. We don't have control over that state highway. It's V-Transit does, so we would have to plan it, make the case for it, study the various safety issues. And it seems like an opportunity to also look at this, um, another issue that the Hannaford Project brought up, which is uh, wait times of people trying to get out of Mechanicsville Road during the peak evening hour. And it, are there solutions to that or, or ways to mitigate that that are something other than a traffic light, which is all that's been discussed during the Hannaford Review to date. So... I think this is a timely one. Um, unfortunately, the, est the two estimates I got were very expensive, uh, and these are consultants that do this work, these, these kind of projects all the time, and they just said, one of them said, we did a project similar in Shelburne, it ran this much. Another one said, we did a project like this in Jericho, it ran this much, and that's where the estimates came in. Um, at a $50,000 cost, if that's what it turned out to be, it could be less. Um, the local match is is substantial and we don't really have the dollars in the fy19 budget at least not in the planning and zoning special projects line item budget so we'd need to pull some funds from this fiscal year and carry them forward or find some other pot of money uh, to make that local match happen for that project so these are due tomorrow i think no no the 19th yeah. Oh, okay. Applications oh, for right. the UPWP are due the 19th. So my thought was, well, you present them tonight. Yeah, I you gotcha. can think about them, right. um, finalize which projects you want to do at your next meeting, and then I'll write up the applications in short order. I think I said that's what we should yes. do, right? So yeah. now, now it's all making sense. Um, so that's okay. that one. And then the last one is uh, the Green Mountain Transit Bus Ridership Program that Richard Watts and Jonathan Slayson had uh, thought about. Um, the nice part about this one is that... Uh, they feel, and I agree, that it, it's a project that would be regionally significant and there likely wouldn't be a local match as a result. The, the way the UPWP program works is if it is of regional significance, they'll, they'll fund it without a match. Um, that's for them to determine, but we think it would make sense for that. And, and this project is, is, um, is interesting, but not, um, not super complex. Um, and, and the work would be conducted by, um, the, the parties in play. So Jonathan's, uh, consultant, the firm that he works for has expertise in this and he's, um, he thinks they'd, he'd be willing to do that work. And, uh, Richard being a professor at university of Vermont has access to resources there. And, um, so essentially, it is taking a look at the folks who ride the, the commuter bus now and um, then reaching out to folks that are in sort of the rider shed and, and trying to figure out ways to bring them into the, into the bus system. What's, what are the stumbling blocks? What are right. the barriers? How can those be uh, addressed so that ridership can be uh, bolstered? So, so I think South Burlington is also partnering. So that's uh -huh. what we can do either way. I mean, it's, yeah. there's no yeah. money. Yeah, we've yeah. got we've got two local guys who yeah. who are very we smart and know what to do, and they they would like the town to be the principal sort of yeah. entity on it, but they're they're willing to take the lead on the project. Absolutely. You know, just yeah. coordinating with uh, with Andrea and myself. And then Green Mountain Transit um, is aware of this, and you know, I think <clears throat> intrigued at, at is this a good model to. Uh, encourage more ridership um, by offering, by making, in, maybe I'll say incentivizing it, but really to, f to identify the potential <coughs> riders better and to communicate um, how it can work and, and identify areas wh where, what are the barriers and how do we get through those. Yeah. I think also it's, it, UVM is very much of a partner and it's, it's really to their benefit to right not have to add more parking right. lots and right. so right. what could what UVM do they do the, as the, the employer center, yeah. and that's the model that yeah. we've talked about a lot at the rpc mm -hmm. is really needing to um, involve the employers more in um in 
getting getting and ridership that's up. That's the way this project w would work is because the the Hill institutions, UVM, Champlain College, um, the, hospital. the hospital, which is sort of UVM, yeah. but UVM, UVM Medical, uh, because they maintain an employee database and know where all their employees live and provide these these transit benefits. Um, Jonathan and Richard feel like th there's a data there's data to be mined there that then can be used to try to grow the ridership. Um, ever since Heinsberg Rides started a long time ago, when Carla Munson got things going, uh, we've been trying to do this sort of thing, and um, this might be an interesting interesting way to go at it. At the very least, it'll be an it would be nice to get some of that data and to see what kind of outreach can happen with it. Yeah. Um, so those are the three specific um, ideas, and um, at the end of the memo, I just listed several other ideas yeah. that I've been kicking around. One that Mike Bissonnette um, had suggested, um, and I think that the three that you see listed are sort of uh, birds in the hand. You know, maybe the more more uh, pressing, uh, given current situations, and the others, you know, uh, maybe for future years. Okay, this is uh, helpful. Um, so unless, you know, if anybody has any specific questions. Well, I, I just would like to, to just talk a little bit more about the Mechanicsville Road one and understand that, um, you know, it comes up as a uh, the least functioning intersection it always has, even before any of the lights went in. And yet I have not personally heard a lot of complaints about that intersection. And so it's like, are we trying, I mean, if Hannaford's was not in the picture, then I don't think we would probably be addressing this, mm -hmm. but because the judge, I mean, but that's mm -hmm. been thrown out. Right. But at the same time, I feel like it's important for us to be um, in charge of this project so that we can drive the alternatives analysis and everything that happens. Because oftentimes um, we will get a proposal which is the least expensive um, for the applicant to have to pay for. Yeah. So I, 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 would, I, I feel like I'd like to move ahead with this, but I also feel like it may come back with some costly proposals that we may in the end not want to implement. But if we do want to implement them, because Hannaford's is moving ahead and we have our own traffic analysis, I think we'll be in a better position to provide information to the DRB and for ourselves in understanding how we want that to function. And maybe come up with the, the best solution yeah. in that situation. Yeah, yeah. I or maybe I, we'll do nothing. Yeah, and I, I think, um, I mean, certainly this the sidewalk is a spot there where people are coming down that sidewalk and they can't get across. Exactly. The that is very So good. I think that's a, a reasonable uh, piece to look at because we're not right now going to extend the sidewalk on the uh, east side of right. 116 at least. Um, so I think that that would be is an important piece to look at. And I also, I, I'd agree with you in that that intersection's not the worst one but primarily because all the traffic is backed up and it allows the, the mm -hmm. sort of, uh, you know, zipper. the zipper effect. Yeah. And, um, you know, certainly the CVU intersection, hopefully this year it gets, <clears throat> gets uh, modified to allow turning lanes, which then probably will move the problem back down to the CVU light, which, you know, if we address and, and if we actually address those two items, then Mechanicsville may become right. the bottleneck when, you know, people aren't crawling at 10 miles an hour and they're going 30 and they're not going to necessarily stop. So I think it's an you know, appropriate thing to look at for sure. Have we, um, Alex, did we discuss that intersection or look at it in any formal way previously? I'm thinking back to the scoping study on 116. I'm trying to yeah. remember yeah. that. The, the recommendation from that scoping study uh, was to install a, an improved crosswalk there, maybe with textured, you know, imprinting on the on the pavement or the asphalt or raised crosswalk or pedestrian refuge island, you know, or something like that. Um, because it, uh, it, it was identified as a key pedestrian sort of uh, 
Well, yeah, you usage area. When you look at where the highest pedestrian use is, it's in that section from this building, you know, up to the public house and, and that intersection. And like Phil was saying, it it's not a safe place for people to get across the street. I don't understand why cars and people can't go down to Commerce Street. There's a crosswalk there. There's a light there. Um, if you're coming, from, well, I guess you could. Yeah. You know. So if I'm you're coming from walk. Andrea's house. Right. Well, <laughs> I mean, exercise is good for you. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> remember too, Marilee, that the unfortunately we don't have a connecting sidewalk on the west side of 116 <coughs> from Lyman Storage, just north of Public House, to the fire station. You, you, if you want to be on a plowed sidewalk. You actually have to go back into Creekside, you know, on Farmall Drive, and then come up around behind the storage bar. And there's no, there is no sidewalk on either side of 116 in that section. So that, that's another reason until we fix that um, to have a, a way for people to get across 116. So if you're coming from Thistle Hill or or, or um, that part of Mechanicsville Road, you you have easy access to. Um, the west side of 116, whether it's the public house or or the United Church, you know, and not to not have to walk all the way down to Lampman's Cross and then come back. Uh, people just don't do that. As much as it might be good exercise, pedestrians like drivers take the shortest way to get to their destination, even and sometimes it's not the safest. Be dangerous without a light. Not if it's redesigned. Well, that's it's what the study would, would look right. at, is what sort of crosswalk would be a safe crosswalk, um, and whether you would need any kind of uh, traffic control to make it happen, or whether it could be a, a flashing, flashing beacon or, or what have you. Well, we would see. That's the purpose of the, of the study, would be to come up with a solution that works there. The nice part is you've got great sight, distant, or sight visibility. So as a pedestrian standing at that intersection, you you can see cars in both directions, well, you, and they you can't until you. That's the problem. Is that you can't until you get way out there on the curb of one sixteen. Regardless, it's right. the high point in the road. Oh, it's so, the high point. So yes, it's yes. not like there's a. And in any case, I think that there's going to be a viable way to make it work. I'm just not sure what it is. That's why we get to pay the high powered consultants to figure it out for us. So I have a question regarding the one the corridor study from years ago mm. are we kind of trying to pick away at this rather than look at the the bigger picture of what the issue is through the village which is one state highway yeah. coming through and just no other way and so, all these so features what the study showed which i thought was interesting was that um of all the various uh street interconnecting uh, networking that that could happen um, the biggest bang for the buck in terms of reducing the queuing, just the, just the parking lot that 116 becomes for 45 mm -hmm. minutes or so in the afternoon, uh, was to complete the, the 116 CVU Road intersection improvements and to fix the Charlotte Road 116 intersection. Just completing those two projects would, would reduce um, delays, traffic delays during the peak hour by 20%. Um, all the other sort of uh, interconnected street networks that we've talked about and that we still want to do, and they make sense from a transportation standpoint, don't don't have that much impact, and not as much as those completion of those two projects. So what the study told us was that from the big picture, get those two projects done. Just yeah. get those done, which is why we really need to push on this Charlotte Road intersection, because if Hannaford doesn't do it for us, VTrans doesn't seem inclined to make it happen, so we, we, have, to, we have to push on that. Um, and beyond that, we will be picking, picking, you know, small right. projects in the corridor to just make incremental improvements after those two biggies. Yeah, I certainly don't disagree with getting that done, but in the morning, there's a situation coming off of Silver Street in sure. 116, which is just as bad, if maybe not even worse than it is in the afternoon. Right, that's so, another... But that, that's why fixing uh, the Charlotte Road one, it's, it's, fixing those two will, will... It's like a slip <laughs> in a way, right? When you fix one area, it's going to show up somewhere else. Sure. That's, that's probably what will happen. In the same way I'm saying Mechanicsville Road might happen. It might become the problem 
once the other two areas are fixed. Yeah, well, I just didn't know if there was a, a greater plan somewhere out there that either a go around and make 116 more of like a, a village Flo street. Main street. Yeah. yeah, no, like the scoping study did look at that, and there's there, it didn't recommend any kind of by bypass. And frankly, um, from a regional transportation and statewide perspective, there's just not enough money to pay right. for bypasses right. anymore. We have to fix what we have and and make it work more efficiently. That's the only way we're going to be able to afford to right. okay. to fix these problems. And bypasses have been shown to not reduce the amount of traffic on the other roads. You know, it, it's like it's in seconds. Them. It's in less than a minute that it it improves it. So, all right. Any more questions for Alex? Are. So uh, our job is to come back with uh, our recommendations for you on this for next time. Yeah, take time. a look at the yeah. three that are proposed, maybe the list below it. Think yeah. about for yourself what projects you think, you know, we could use some help on from, from a transportation standpoint in particular, but maybe more broadly as well. And if there's something we've missed, you know, bring it back at your next meeting. I'll be here. And, and if, if there's something, some great idea that everybody agrees on that's not on this memo, um, you know, I'll have four days <laughs> to, uh, to suss it out. Is, and there's one that really sticks out for me here. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. think, uh, you know, Alex and I talked about that and yeah. I think the first approach would be to talk to the landowners, um, and, try to improve the and, and improve and, and yeah. Um, because I mean, otherwise, a lot could be done right there. I, I think yeah. talking to those land, you know, trying to address it from that side um and um it will be a i mean i i a, ma a super major expense to fix it from the 116 side and and if we can do the work not in the right of way by working with those landowners at least it's a try and and actually there there's two of those landowners are the houses are for sale so maybe we can just get in there and do it <laughs> I mean, we can certainly talk to them, so, I think. So the key with that, you can talk more about it at your next meeting when you finalize this, but the key with that is to, is to identify who, that that is a project you want worked on in the next year yeah. and who, yes. which select board member or which staff person is going to lead the charge on that because we've, we don't really have a public works person whose job it is to think about those things. You know, we've, we've, we've shunted some of um, those duties onto Eric's department, but he's trying to plug leaks and, you know, get state permits for wastewater systems. And um, dealing with sidewalk drainage is not something the highway department deals with. So uh, if Eric's department, you know, isn't working on it, doesn't have the capacity and Mike's department isn't doing it because it's the state highway and VTrans doesn't care, then... We just need to identify who's going to work on it, and maybe that means money, or maybe it means hiring somebody to to lead that project, or maybe it's a volunteer. I don't, I don't know, but otherwise it'll just remain bad. <laughs> and we um, there, we did have a proposal, I think, at one time to provide an improved crosswalk at Silver Street for <coughs> school, and I think those were you know some flashing lights or something like that. And the state decided not to do that or wouldn't fund it. I think we asked the state to fund that. So that's a project that's, I think, designed and, and just requires well, the... We, Renee actually uh, got, got on that recently, um, and, and kudos to, for Renee to, to doing that, because it'd been, it, it, like you said, Phil, we looked into it and then sort of dropped the ball. Um, and unfortunately, the... The feedback you got, Renee, do you want to speak to that? It was it was initially positive from VTrans and then negative, right? Right. So I um, reached out to the school, spoke with the principal. I, I called VTrans. The initial um, talking with the District 5, they were in support of it. He was going to explore some grant opportunities and other ideas. And then once we talked to some more people, we found out that it actually we aren't able to do that. They won't support the flashing beacon. 
and it's um, not a funding it's issue. Not it's a, funding a issue. it's a Policy? standards of yeah. federal highway standards have changed or something, and they don't yeah. like these flashing beacons anymore. Or I... the, the new MUC, MUTCD, the Manual of Uniform Traffic Control Devices, yeah. um, did not renew. They, they they had a like a test period that they bring these in to check them out. They let it sunset. It's, so, so you see them popping up so all over the place, and now they'll stop popping out. As as of mid December, you sh that you shouldn't put any more in. The the previous ones are grandfathered and allowed to stay, but by regulation, you're not supposed to put any more in. On the plus side, Renee did, like she said, talk to the principal, and they were they had concerns when the sidewalk and the crosswalk were initially done, but they indicated that they don't have those concerns now that they haven't heard uh yeah, yeah. with jeff o'hare and, and he what he did he was one that had initial concerns when he first did that but he said since then he's been kind of watching and watching um, that area and he's not seen anything that concerns him so um okay there was a a resident that came in and was very concerned had seen a student texting while crossing um, but unfortunately, with all the safety measures you put in, you can't prevent mm -hmm. some of those choices. But, um, but I just wanted to make sure that it wasn't a concern if this was something beyond that with the school, if they've been seeing it, if they've been hearing. But he said he hadn't heard from any parents any, right. any concerns. Yeah, he hadn't good. seen them, and he had been um, actively watching. So um, I think the education piece is going to be, you know, better for, suited for them right. just to be educating parents. Eric? I just kind of see the elephant in the room on this. The two things are, are actually intertwined. The, uh, the the morning traffic queue um, could be, you know, dealt with to quite a large degree by using um, public transportation that we already have. Mm -hmm. Those those big yellow buses. Yeah. If we could incentivize them, people to put their kids on the bus, the queue would drop down a lot. Yes. That that observation has been made <laughs> several times in the past. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Are there any more questions? So we'll have this on the agenda next week and potentially make some decisions on which ones to encourage Alex to move forward with the CC. So it's nice to have a full complement of those representatives at those meetings now, huh? Yeah. I think it's the first time that I know of that we have, so that's good. Uh, so we'll, the next item on the agenda, item five, is a, a, a budget discussions, and we have, I don't know, seven or eight items. Um, each one's fairly small, but... Um, a small piece of the budget, but it's an opportunity to discuss them all. So we'll do the agency re request yeah. review first. Two Kathy, do you want to? Oh, no. You can sit there. Yes. You're just going to read them and ask if you have questions, or do you want to Are you going to be able to hear them from back here, or would you rather? Uh, it's for the viewing audience. <laughs> I mean, it's <laughs> 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 That's why you got all dressed up for us, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, you have copies of all this. Yes, we yes. do. I was thinking that you were you were going to look them over and just ask any questions that you might have. Well, we can start that way. So okay. this is the agency. Or I can read down through. <laughs> and you have a committee. That reviews mm -hmm. uh, all the requests, mm -hmm. um, weighing it against, um, you know, how many <coughs> actual Heinsberg citizens we think are being served and whether they're being served in an efficient way. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you make the recommendations on which agency uh, we think we should fund under this yearly budget item. Mm -hmm. Would and you like me to read our policy to you of how I think that we go? I think that would be all right. Okay. Sure. The intent of the Agency Request Review Committee is to ensure that our taxpayer dollars will benefit the greatest number of residents possible, with priority given to agencies that provide food, shelter, health, and emergency services, 
and with additional consideration given to Heinsberg based agencies. Yes, Age Well did not send in an application. Um, um, they usually do. Um, 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 prevent Child Abuse Vermont. Let me see here. <laughs> and then the Red Cross just shows that those dropped. They were small items. Yes, the prevent child abuse did not apply, okay? And the Red Cross, um, there weren't any... Services? Services. Yeah. So we... Mm -hmm. And uh, the Hinesburg Community Resource Center shows a small increase, a pretty good $2,000. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Hinesburg Rides... Uh, very small increase. Mm -hmm. And overall, it's an increase of $1,250? Yes. Are there any questions? I support that we continue to do these funds. I'm surprised that um, those other agencies didn't, didn't request, but we've Pretty clear on what the guidelines are, so. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They probably will next year. <laughs> a lot of these organizations have had a lot of staff turnover. Mm -hmm. I, mm -hmm. I noticed mm -hmm. that, so that could be that's oftentimes what happens why deadlines are missed. Or yeah. As well, part of your process, do you um, um, look for ones that aren't on the list and ask them, or do you just? see who was last year and look for who was last there's year there's an application process yeah which yeah. has to be in by is it October? no i'm not asking like oh. what oh. that i'm asking like so if there's somebody on the list that you think should be on the list but isn't on the list do you solicit them for no no yeah. it's just strictly who's come who comes to us we have we have limited funds and we just try to stick to our policy with the heinsberg which, which is where i was going with that. yeah yeah we did um Last year, we went to the surrounding towns and um, got their list of what, how much money they give, and we feel like we're right in the ballpark. Yeah. We did kind of compare. I mean, certainly, I think the process has been in place for six Many years. years. Yeah. yeah, a number of years. Seems like a good process. Um, well and, supported. Yeah, but I think it is well supported. Yeah. And, um, you know, if you look at the ones that are being funded, it appears the more money is going directly to the organizations that are supporting Heinsberg the most. Certainly the Heinsberg Community mm -hmm. Resource Center with the food shelf and all the other mm -hmm. uh, services they provide. Um, and then the VNA um, are the two largest contributions <coughs> and those probably provide an awful lot of good service for Heinsberg. Mm -hmm. I just had one question about the resource center because I see in two years the number of people served has gone up 500. I'm just curious if you had the opportunity to talk with them about what's going on. Okay. Went from 11, 1,130 people served in 2015 to 1,638 mm -hmm. this past year. I just don't know what kind of, if, if you even talk with them about it or if it's just the request that they put in because I'd be curious to ask them what what's it's, it's the that. request they put in but also um, they have m more groups under their policy now the children yeah. and families okay um, That's what I was all say. that kind I of things all added just broadened their, their, yeah. okay yeah. their, broadened their program okay yeah. yes all right which is um, not necessarily a negative effect, uh, but rather a good thing in that they're able to further uh, reach their mission as to what they're right. trying to accomplish. I can't speak directly to it, but just sort of what I've noticed over the year mm -hmm. is okay. exactly that. Well, that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Any other? You're welcome, and we need two more on our committee. Okay. okay.
Have you been out beating the pavement? We have. We have. We've got huh. one person. Oh, oh, good. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, we need. I think the more people, the more ideas, the more yeah. input we have, the better. Yeah. Well, we appreciate you doing that. So. I mean, maybe a town meeting we might be able to mention because it, yeah. it's a it's a time when everybody gets the. True. Talk briefly about it. It's its own one day. I remember a town meeting that we used to go and vote for each one of these right. one by one, and we'd right. be there till after midnight. Right. <laughs> so, so um, to your comment about you're looking for two more people over the course of 12 months, uh, you're not at it every month. You're just sort of busy leading up to this point and then town meeting. Yeah, we only have like four meetings Ex a year, maybe the most. Exactly. So yes. we're talking um, how many hours a year are you, you actually talking about? Maybe six, ten hours? Kind Probably of six. Yeah. yeah. So yes. we're not yeah. talking about a big... Not a big commitment. Yeah. No. No. Yeah. An important one. Yeah. Absolutely. One. But that's, that's the thing people always ask. How much yes. time? Yes. Yeah. So. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next item is uh, Conservation Commission, and we have a copy of that uh, budget proposal in our packet. We do. And uh, Mike, you wanna you gonna come up? I'm just gonna give you. So these are your, in the town plan, your highlighted items that um, you have some level of responsibility? Well, um, actually, I think these are two priority items that Alex has been working with us on. And uh, there's funds requests in there to help support those. Um, but actually, there's... There's 29 items there. I just wanted to make a note that there's 29 items there. <laughs> All right. Any comments or questions on the budget? So it's an increase from previous years. What was it previously? Explain a little bit more about the natural resources sure. budget item. Sure. That line item in is for we've been working. Can I throw you under the bus a few more times? You can do that. Okay. As much as you like. So, huh? Well, so uh, we've been talking a lot about trying to identify natural wildlife corridors and create mapping studies to become and. Um, mapping studies with those corridors and other significant areas of interest in land land around the town and the goal is to be more a little more uh, proactive for some somebody wants to build a house say that on a lot we can say well this is in the main part of your corridor can you move it to the right or left rather than waiting till the DRB and we jump up and down and holler and do all those things and try to be a little more proactive so Have that's you, yeah. So is that for hiring a consultant then? So work with a consultant and do some mapping. We're still talking about that. Yeah. Have you looked at Charlotte? Charlotte did, did this a few years ago, and they have a very comprehensive um, uh, criteria and analysis. And um, we can. You, we have. You an, might I mean, wanna, Bob is really. What's that? Bob has really talked about using understanding the maps first. Isn't that where we're? Well, the maps that we have are statewide significance. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, what so what you're talking about is trying to develop some local knowledge, local knowledge, which and requires a lot of volunteers and um, yeah, okay, and and, and consultants. And yeah. consultants. A bit more of a focus in this conversation yeah. about yeah. targeting the wildlife corridors, corridors that we have mapped on in ma on map 14 of the town plan. Mm -hmm. Understanding that those were done yes. several years ago at a very landscape yes. sort of level. Um, and, a, and there's a recommendation in the plan to do a more specific job of identifying how wide those ought to be and whether they're all in the right places. places. So it, or whether there's additional ones because those are at the landscape level. Sure. Yeah. But I think the idea behind it is not to do sort of a Charlotte level of um, analyzing all the resources, right. uh, but rather 
we have a lot of resources mapped and, and, and do a better job of mapping these corridors to, to link some of the habitat blocks together. And it's unclear at this point from talking with uh, Vermont Fish and Wildlife um, how much of that they can support us in and how much of that we would need to hire out uh, with a wildlife consultant. That'd be something you could work with UVM on? Like uh, interns, whatnot? I know we've done it with forestry in the past. Yeah, it's, it's possible. Uh, we don't have a we don't have an established relationship with UVM, and so it would take some. Uh, well, I think take some time to build that relationship, and then try to find a student who would, you know, be able to tackle it. Mm -hmm. The forest town forest committee has pretty good relationships with people at UVM. So, I um, mean, in the natural resource planning, but I. Th I think as long as there's a, um, there has to be, I think, um, commitment on the understanding of um, using the, utilizing some of the resources that you have on the Conservation Commission in terms of, of people, local people's familiarity with um, some of these issues would be really good and involving more citizens. Um, that a lot of times we hear at the DRB uh, issues when when neighbors show up because they know what's going on. And so I think if we can capitalize on the local knowledge that we have in a systematic way, that would be excellent. And I, I would support uh, having a consultant who is who is willing to engage with local citizens as well as bringing their professional knowledge to it and, and creating creating a map. But I don't think it will work if we just rely on a consultant or we just rely on anecdotal um, information. There really has to be the technical expertise to help support the anecdotal information that we get. Um, I have a couple questions. So, sure. it, um, so this came in after the budget. The budget we have doesn't show some of these numbers, so right. these are a little different. Yeah. Um, and uh, um, there is the the money from the uh, Vermont Gas. Right. And is that? That's what I was just trying to. Does that? So, I mean. So the discussion that I've had before with some of the is what what is the goal what are our goals for that money and do we want to just take that money every year and use it for maintenance or projects or something or do we want to like uh use it for a large product like um uh widening their redoing the parking lot or something like that and i don't we don't really have a plan for that yet so um so then is it fair to say that uh the items that are here there's no expectation that that money is going to be applied necessarily to here. That's that's off to the side. Off to the point. side until yeah, we have to have a discussion of what, how it can be utilized the be in the best way. Um, we did use the, some of it though for, yep. to to get the mowing established for the the, the yearly mowing established. What and is that costing? What did it cost last time? Well, you have five hundred. Right. So that's. for mowing for Jafrags? No. Let me re review that. So what we did is we established a, a yearly mowing plan, and that, sh and hopefully that's been moved into the town contract. So that's automatically done, like the cemeteries and the parks and things like that. So it's not in this budget. Right. Well, the the, the five hundred dollars listed there is for um, specific. Rot a rotating s specific spots to improve the habitat for the wild, the bird habitat. You wouldn't mow the same place every year, and that would be worked out, and that would be allow us to create um, a better better bird habitat because it would be at different levels at different years. But the specific mowing, it hopefully, has been moved into the town contract. And which mowing is that? The mowing that you're talking about? Well, yeah, that's been moved into the town contract. Hopefully it's moved into for the next year. 
What what what, what mowing sure. are we talking about? Sure. Um, I don't have it in front of me. Um, the trails would be brush trails um, along the edge of the field. Um, hmm. I'm blanking. Um, Ted sliding know. hill. And I want to say up around back, there's a sp area that would be mowed on a yearly basis. Yeah, no. Did I get mowed this year? Yeah, I don't have it in front of me. Um, but you're not accounting for money from the conservation commission going towards that no. being part of the town contract, but no. paying for that portion. Right. But that that contract. So this we negotiated every year, right? No. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we had a three-year contract. Um, and it's Sir, very different mowing than what we trails. He didn't have a problem with it. Mm -hmm. with, with Walt Wall is the one that did it. So you, how did, and it got paid for? Yeah, out of, out of, out of, out of our funds. Out of, out so I would think that that should show up in your budget, though. Yeah. The mowing cost. Well. In the same way cemetery is shows up in their budget. Oh. And the recreation, and the recreation shows, up, it shows up in their budget. Yeah. Okay. Then I need to increase the budget. We well, need to show how much it would be. Sure. Right. Okay. Is this what, once a year? Yeah. Uh, no, we had it set up for twice a year, and it would be. Um, it would be probably add. Instead of mowing, saying five hundred, it'd probably be three thousand. Yeah, I think it was eighteen hundred last year. Is what I remember. Yeah, I don't have it in front of me. One item that I uh, just caught my eye was the, the uh, support at 2000. So that, um, I think, is described as uh, somebody to do minutes and all those things. And I don't think most of our committees do that, Forest Committee, Trails Committee, or anybody else. And uh, it, the only ones that do would be DRB, Select Board. Planning Commission. Planning Commission. So this sort of sets a new standard. I, I, I certainly get yeah, why so, it might be helpful. So I learned something. Um, I've listened to Andrea for many years be an advocate for this position for all the boards. And um, now I actually approached some of the other boards this year and, and talked to them about possibly trying to put money in each of their budgets for a person like this <coughs> to be supportive, to keep us on track, to move us forward. <laughs> to help us with our uh, items for the town plan and things like that. And I'm not sure that that idea is still re is ready to take off as a town-wide thing, but I still think it would be a valuable resource for us to keep moving and keep us on track and maybe help this position grow maybe to all the other boards, but definitely to help us keep on track. Um, so that's what the money's there for is is learning from years past. Hmm. Any other questions? Sure. Well, that is something that um, usually somebody on the Conservation Commission did, like the the chairperson and the uh, secretary. Sure. So, are are people not willing to do that anymore? Well, it's always. It's always a it's always a bit of a difficult task with anybody. I think I'm, I'm speaking for myself. Um, I personally would rather spend time focusing on things that I want to do, rather than some of these other the, the minutes and getting making sure they get in, keeping close to uh, open meeting laws and all that stuff, um, all those things. Um, I think that. Um, this position, this position would help a person would help us keep on task, instead of looking at a volunteer and get, uh, putting it away for a couple of weeks to keep us focused on different on certain subjects at each time. That would be the goal. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, I think you would be keeping everybody focused, but you know, I get that doing minutes, trying to do minutes and do a meeting, can be a challenge. I've done it. I've done. Minutes for meetings. lots of meetings. So. Getting, but the minutes. But really I mean, I did him for this. The when I did him for the select board, I didn't get. I mean, the school board, I didn't get paid. I just did them right. as a volunteer, right? And town meeting, I didn't get paid. Every 
Well, I, I, more or less yeah. what's the conversation about yeah. Yeah. Any motions. And Maggie you know, used to do it on the I look a little bit. Too, I look still a little have to be posted in at certain yeah. places, so there's there's the more way, work than yeah. it was ten years ago for yeah. sure. Yeah, I, when you look at like the planning commission that has has Alex the support people in place, they're able to get the speakers in. There, it's not, it's very focused and it's very organized and it's very business like, and um, I'm a little jealous. So, I think. That, right. Well, they do have statutory responsibilities, though. I mean, how, we have the open meeting law. Yeah. How, how would you feel about this this support person being an ideal for the future? Because where uh, we're trying to have a tight budget, it seems to me it seems a little excessive since people on the committee have always done it in the past. Well, it depends what your goals are. I mean, um, we you've given us a list of twenty nine items to try to get through. I mean, it's going to be hard to keep volunteers on task. I mean, um, you know, you know, we meet once a month, and it, if I could get two of these focused, that'd be great. Um, but that's using a volunteer. If you have another person, a, fo a professional person who says, okay, we're gonna do this, this, and this is what we're gonna need for support, then that's, that's a more, it's a more organized well, workload. The, the chair should be doing, the, the person here is just well, taking the minutes and, and posting them, I would think. Yeah. And, and unless, well, unless it's a different position than what you described here, Posting agendas, taking the minutes at meetings, submitting meetings, coordinating possible projects, I guess, reaching out to different people for different time periods. It's a, it's a change, but it's, you know, I can understand why it might be, um, you know, helpful in a, with a volunteer board. So well, maybe if it's important, budget. maybe that's what the, the money from Vermont Gas can go towards. Regardless of the budget that we're talking about tonight, I will say I've heard good things and good ideas coming out of the Conservation Commission, especially using um, fish and wildlife aspect to drive conservation yeah. efforts. Yeah. Um, that's one idea I've heard and, and some others. So I've been pretty excited with what I've heard from somebody I know on the commission. <laughs> I think there's some fun ideas. We just got to... Yeah. Keep focused. The idea of supporting the education programs in the schools; um, those are the types of things that really people want to do. And um, but that's not necessarily one of the action items on the exactly. plan, which is fine because I think you guys can can have your own agenda. It does not have to well, just that, be right. This. And that would be the goal of the the support person is just to say. You can do whatever you want, but we have to focus on these items too, and this is how we're going to get them through. So I think maybe what we'll do on the overall budget, we'll put those numbers in, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. And then you also, under your budget, we also have the town forest uh, committee, I think, the Lake Iroquois Association money. Except I did um, miss here. Someone uh, noted that Town Forest has apparently been shown twice oh. on the budget. So oh, that's let's cut their budget in half. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> However, I looked at the town report last year and it wasn't funded twice. No, okay. it was just yeah. funded once, okay. but it's shown in two different okay. budgets. So and then uh, that's Lewis Creek yeah. Yeah. Association is under there too. Yeah. yeah. So. I didn't really understand why the Lewis Creek was under there. It's a separate entity with a separate... Well, we had, historically, we had had members of the Conservation Commission on the Lewis Creek, and we'd worked, I mean, lately we've been working, Lewis Creek Association has been working more with um, the town administrator's office and doing the stormwater projects, um, but there certainly is opportunities for many of the projects that Lewis Creek Association too uh, that are listed on town plan activities to oh. come in and talk to the true I mean I'm, I'm sure well you I just did it's a separate just a separate well business. so it's like Iroquois Association so, right. so. well the association not oh well, the associate right, yeah. I get these mixed up Lake the Iroquois association, association is separate Lake Iroquois Recreation District is, is a town separate. group yeah. 
Well, no, it's a separate municipality. We have representation on that. I don't we have know. Representation on all of them. So um, the number we have here, Michael, for um, Lewis Creek Association is 550. Is that correct? You would I, I, put, I didn't put, I, like I said, I don't, it's a separate entity yeah. to me. I didn't really know what to do with that. So um, it's not. Um, so you're not saying zero funding, or you're not saying 550. You just you just don't know. I think it's just something that it got placed in that budget. Yeah. So, so it's not we, anything the conservation commission. It's like the land. So should we, how should we interpret the 550 that's currently there as we are looking at the overall budget as 550 for something? I mean, a, I can I can reach out to Marty, I guess, and see if there's. Well, any we would. I mean, I can speak see. that that Lewis Creek Association gets um, at least 500 dollars from the other five towns that are in the watershed. So there it is. Right and there, yeah. um, it's very important to yeah. the budget. I um, just kept it at the is, same As I recall in the past, the West Creek would, would, would ask the Conservation Commission for that money and ask them to put it in the budget. So maybe um, maybe they sent something and you didn't get it. I don't know. Oh, I, I, did, I didn't receive anything. So. I think it went directly probably to the town administrator. I think, yeah, I, yeah, I think when they sent the, and that's probably where I plugged in the number from, they, um, when they send the information for the town report. I was just making sure somebody had actually asked for it instead of us. Yeah. Oh, in, yes. In, in that it's been asked. Yeah. It's, it's, um, that's all. That's remains fine. in the same. Uh, that's fine. I mean, kind of in a way, I see it as kind of like, an, almost like an agency review thing. So, so I just. <coughs> and your Prague Park Association. There's a line here for eighteen hundred. Yeah, well, that's probably that. the well, mowing. I think well, that's, that's the, mowing. the mowing. I think so. That's been zeroed out, though. Where am I? Oh, in the budget that last year's. I don't have it in front of me. So, it's, well, it's, what are it, budget sheets that we have oh, okay. always used before? Um, right, I haven't looked at them. So that probably was the mowing, you think? I think so. That's, yeah. the, that's the figure I remember. Okay. To remember. maintain the park. Yeah. But there is no Japrag Park Association. Right. But there's always been an, uh, that same figure item. for it. Okay, hold on. Right there. Ah, there you go. Try this one. So I think maybe between you and Mike, you know, you'll merge what's yeah. presented here into our master and we'll yeah. go from there. We can do that. It's like every meeting we change this. Well I think this is pretty much what's <laughs> on the screen right now is <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It is. Thank you, Renee. Yeah. yeah. I'm getting the right one. Was that too. do I have the wrong one up then? Is there, did you put a new one in there? There, yeah, the That's one that was what put I'm just in later today. Oh, so, yeah. 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 Just, okay. Tom just right. made me realize yeah. that. That'll help. All right. Are there any more questions for Mike? Uh, yeah, there we go. <laughs> All right. Um, I think that's it. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, guys. Buildings and facilities. That would be you, Eric, right? Mm -hmm. What page would that be on? Uh, yeah. The budget one that's in today. So with this budget, I mean, as you're looking at it right now, I really kept everything um, the same or even actually decreased mm -hmm. a little bit. The only thing I added additional that wasn't there previously is the solar trackers mm -hmm. operation and maintenance charge. Uh -huh. 4000 is what we factored in thinking about last year, how when I actually talked to All Earth, um, Tim Harrison. That mm -hmm. he was um, saying about a seven hundred and fifty dollars a quarter based on the rate it is right now, so I bumped up two hundred dollars, just assuming there could be a change in a rate. Um, so it's not the four thousand. That's uh, line one hundred and one. You're saying one hundred and one. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So the highlights in yellow are ones that are you know a change. 
Mm -hmm. Okay. So, where does sidewalk come in here? Salaries for sidewalks. As far as the sidewalk maintainer? Yeah. So it's in that same line. So under salary and wages, 30% okay. comes from Eric's salary. And then the, the remaining um, pays towards the sidewalk maintainer, um, okay. the person that's plowing the parking lots and okay. town hall. Things like that. Primarily plowing. Plowing, shoveling. Yeah. And shoveling, yeah. The shoveling that's happening. 30%. What's that? The 30%? That was, we, we, we kind of used the KISS system of, uh, you know, because my staff also you know, does stuff and we figured it was about 12% overall of all of us. So rather than pick a piece of the, you know, I mean, we made it easier for Missy rather than take a piece of John's, a piece of, sure. you know, we just take just from mine. Yeah. Yeah. 12, 12 to 15% of, 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 of three all, guys. all of us is spent on buildings and ground stuff. Okay. 30% of his salary. Because my salary okay. is the bigger one, so and it's and it's a more stable one because there's not overtime involved and right, but um, but the twenty five thousand includes paying the uh, subcontractors or mm -hmm. other em additional employees. Right. Okay. Yep. For sidewalks, or you're just well the parking lot. Sidewalks, Tom for 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 pushing snow around in the truck. I mean, it's going to be tight to put it all in that, but I try to just to see where we're at this year. Um, right. To see if we can. Yeah. yeah. Just looking for areas that we can. Right. I think. Well, it, it just might be. It might be helpful to keep track of what the subcontract or you know those salaries are versus mm -hmm. you know when you guys are able to shovel here. Mm -hmm. um, but if we're going to need to to come up with some other alternatives, then right. we should we should. Yeah. How we have it worked out currently is the we're, you know contract. Yeah. Well, we have we've hired someone part time to do the first early morning. Yeah. Um, whether that's the sidewalk maintainer mm -hmm. and the uh, shoveling at town hall, but then during the day when storms continue, then um, someone from the utilities department is is um, can do both of those tasks. If they're not available, then we have another. We have the other backup plan for the sidewalk um, maintainer as well. So okay. we've got some backup to the backup. Mm -hmm. But it, I guess it would be good to track over time, kind of what an average. If we're working towards potentially another employee right. or right. something like that, let's track what the no, actual no costs way. are. Right. Yeah. So uh, you know, and how it's divided up. Right. So. I spent some time today looking at other towns' budget reports mm -hmm. and, and budgets and numbers just to see how they're, you know, and everybody is. Going Everyone is. It's different except for when you look at what their grand list is, Absolutely. what their tax rate is, what their overall budget is for each different department. I've been commiserating with but other. It, yeah. <laughs> It's pretty close. That's it's pretty saying. close. Yeah. We're all struggling. We yeah. all have the same pressures on us. Sure. If it's some of us have larger grand lists than others, and and they have other like local More options services. tax and things yeah. like that that can offset those increases, um, which you know we don't have, but everyone's having the budget pressure this year. Yeah. So I have just a couple, the building utilities is primarily just this building, right? Mostly. I mean, there's one or the other. Oh, well, we've got old fire station. Yeah, the old, the old fire station. Oh, the old fire station's fire station. included here. They, I think it might it might be they, included yeah, here. Yeah, I guess okay. it's shared. It's still shared. We, have, we, we still we, we keep the toolcat there, we keep right? Toolcat there. Yeah. 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 Um, we got rid of the rectory thing, so. Right. <laughs> so, so it's mostly this. And yeah. so that's electric and yep. fuel and water. And that wastewater, that's and, expensive and, stuff. And maintenance, <laughs> yep. Um, and the vehicle fuel is primarily for plowing? Yep. And the street lights, even though they've installed LED lights, the cost is the same, right? Actually, we've seen, we're seeing some savings. Are we? Um, with them. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I yeah. see. You're right, yeah, it's gone down. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So in, in the current year, we're... 
seemed like it was a good change. When the uh, solar O and M is in there, thirty two hundred dollars. Wouldn't that be capital? Um, no, it doesn't exceed the five thousand oh. threshold. Okay. And it's right. a regular operation operating it's not maintenance the, type. It's not the um, cost. Without yeah, I was just wondering if we were saving up for when they actually do start having issues. Without going back to our materials, was thirty two hundred dollars about where we wanted to be when we were talking so 4, about four thousand was where we were, was that where we were was? factoring in yeah. last year. When we were going through the process, yeah. Going through that yeah. process is four thousand is what we were estimating. So you know that the off professional your head. <laughs> services is that the custodial services? Professional services is the mowing contract. Oh, the mowing contract. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For. Um, that's you know any of the town hall town, behind town, town hall, hall and. Um, part of line. There's different, yeah, there's all other different areas. The only ones that are paying the, outside of their budget is a recreation the park, cemetery. The little, the little park, yeah. Mechanicsville Road. Yeah. Little islands. And the the mm -hmm. Commerce mm -hmm. Street. Things, yeah. Yeah, I got it. Okay. Yeah. So what about, where is the custodial? Because uh, I heard that. That's part, that's out of that line as well. Oh, it is. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. So that line. Because I thought that was going to go up. It, I mean, it may. I haven't made any changes yet. We've got the quotes. Uh, we're getting quotes in. We should know by the okay. end of this week who we're going to ask, so I'll have a little better figure um, of where we're going to land with that. I found where Town Forest is again. Mm -hmm. Yes. yes. Yep. <laughs> Good job. It's like find, finding Waldo. It's like yeah. a lie spy. <laughs> finding it's got to be a Waldo. metaphor about the yeah. tree in the forest. Yeah, yeah right. right. That's That's right. right. <laughs> we got to yeah. find yeah. one something there. <laughs> Tom's got it. Because the, the tree budget that's in the Conservation Commission is not the same as the street tree budget that... Is there another spot? Well, I don't know that there is, I think but... it's fallen in the, under the Conservation okay. Commission. Right. Which one? The, the five, 5,000? No, five. It was 500. 500, Ooh. right. It's gone up and down a thousand, five hundred. Yeah, Paul did year. send in a, a budget. Oh, right. For the he what he wanted to see done for the trees. So that that's what the conservation commission. That's what in that budget. It's you think well, that's why I wasn't sure where that. I'm yeah. I'm gonna guess that's what that that is. is it's five hundred dollars, but um. Because there is an um capital reserve for trees. Right. Oh, okay. Yeah, so that's where yeah. I was assuming we. Okay. Pull that out of. Yeah. I mean, okay. that's where I've had, you know, when we had to plant the trees for the connector road. Right. That's well, where that's we, what I think we build that out the, of. Take the 500 out of the Conservation right. Commission. Okay. Because yeah. they're not doing any planting. Right. And put it under the town, the, uh, under Paul. Yeah. Under the tree warden. Tree warden. So no where, does, where does that show up in this then, Andrew? Well, it, it, it um, Renee said it's in the capital budget. Well, there is a there is a capital reserve fund for trees, um, and so that's what I had out um, when we purchased the trees for the connector road. Right. Um, we built it to that line. So all he's asked for is five hundred dollars. No, 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 no. He, no, he gave not. us a, another yeah. budget, which oh. is got to pull that. Do have I seen that? Is that you have not? No. Okay, that's why I'm puzzled. Here. Yeah. Okay, anything more? Can I ask a question? Yes, Alex. Um, so Renee knows I like to whine about this, but <laughs> what's in the budget for restorative deferred maintenance on this building, this facility? And Renee, do you, are we hoping to do any of that in this fiscal we year? We are. And that's why it isn't in that budget? Right. Or? We're going to, yeah, trying to get as much as I can squeezed out of this um, fiscal year. So um, utilizing some of the um, resources that we have right now for painting and things like that. But so. we do have the building R&M, yes. repair and maintenance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm just one staff person, and Renee knows I like, I'm a wine agent, I like to wine. Um, th this, this building is where most of our public meetings happen, especially in this room. 
we need to put some money into this building, whether it's this fiscal year or next fiscal year. It needs to be repainted. Um, there's some just some basic, you know, up, updating that needs to happen. Uh, it's heights. Yeah. I'll leave it at that. It's definitely yeah. in, in process, yeah. and mm -hmm. that's been um, a lot of conversations and actions been taking place. We've got some energy efficiency changes that we're already making, um, and the painting I've already reached out to some, you know, got some plans for that. So we, that's, that's a pretty substantial cost, though, right? So I don't know if we have... Cost of paint, and then we've got already have some staff that are, you know, that can do some of it. I'll tell you what, David, bring Some part-time. Yes. <laughs> and there could be some bonding... Experiences that team building, team building exactly. yes. I just I remember when Trevor was here, he got quotes to actually have it professionally painted yeah. like right. it was seven years ago or whatever. Yeah. It was. Yeah. So mm -hmm. that's we're not doing that, we're right. going to have a staff paint party. Paint party, uh, okay. Combination, um, but there's also some um, part time staff that we have that can do some of that work too. But what are we saying? In a better price. Uh, I know there's painting. I know we've talked about the curtains upstairs. I know we've talked about lighting upstairs, energy efficiency. Yeah, so we have that uh, already um, in the works. Were there any other items that immediately come to mind? Um, some locks, you know, to oh, replace right, right. We locks. About that, right? Yep. We did the rugs a while ago. So yeah. Mm -hmm. um, the floors are the hardwood is going to be scheduled to be refinished at oh, least cool. the main hall yeah. for this mm -hmm. summer. Does anybody ever come through and? Yeah, that's yeah, and that's part of our contract now with our new cleaning okay. service. Okay. We'll have that happen Excellent. as well. So. Concrete yeah. steps, look at them. Yeah. If you can see them, mm -hmm. the snow is not obscuring them as you walk about. out the door here are not in good shape. Yeah. And that's not a cheap thing to fix. Also reaching out, trying mm -hmm. to get a cost on the door, this exterior, this um, exit door down here. The, the one that door. looks like. The rust door. That yeah. I've, the blood I've, door. Taking people to, you know, bring them down to the clerk's office or actually bringing it, yeah, bringing them down the steps and all of a sudden they <gasps> think that but something keep, terrible had happened. Just keep there. the lights off through there. You'll be right. Fine. And mm -hmm. the worker's comp goes up. <laughs> well, I, so mean, my I, I think we hear you. Be, yeah. Add some money to next yeah. year's budget and yes. all the things that Renee is talking about, all of which really need to be yeah. done sooner. If there's not enough money in this fiscal year to get yeah. them all done, it sounds like it's a lot of work. Um, mm -hmm. Even if the staff is doing all the painting, yeah. we can't do the, the concrete stairs. We're mm -hmm. not going to replace that door. Uh, I, I, I think we hear you, Alex, and, and I know that, Renee, you've got somebody now with an eye for this stuff that, you know, if it was me, I wouldn't notice it. But I think... Uh, and I know Renee's. I know Renee's very good on follow through, so yeah. I have lots of faith. But I also know that this is the time for you to put yeah. some money aside. So okay. that's why I spoke up. Fair enough. And the furnace was done sort of recently. Yeah, yeah. The furnace mm -hmm. has been replaced, but I have an uh, annual yeah. clean. So yeah. Mm -hmm. just been done. That was last year, was it, or the uh, year before? Year before. Like three or four years. Yeah. Ago, yeah. Time flies. Yeah. yeah. It seems like it was just okay. Got it. It's Fourteen or fifteen. Yeah. So the new cleaning contract is has been By offered the end up. Of this week, we should be able to decide. We've, uh, we're okay. getting a third quote, and then um, so we've already had two that have walked through, and a third one came in today, and so um, they're due this week. So okay. we should have. Mm -hmm. By the end of the week, we should know. All right, any more comments on it? And I think we'll take the building R&M line under consideration. And yeah, I made a note of that. Here's it. the tree email. What's, uh, what is this? Oh, right. From, okay. So there's some maintenance and some replacements. Yeah. It doesn't, yeah, I mean, it also, I remember that we were reminded by the zoning administrator yeah. that we have to replace some trees in the parking lot here. Right. So we're hoping to do that, like maybe green up day or kind of yeah. get yeah. that tied yeah. in for yeah. sure. Okay. Oh, yeah, we can do that this, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Any uh, more comments? Three hundred fifty dollars enough for green update, Bill. Yep. How many hot dogs can you buy for three? I'm gonna buy a lot of hot dogs. dogs. You get about <laughs> eighty hot dogs, eighty hamburgers. <laughs> that brings me um, something. Can we? Can you do some sort of little write-up or something that that we can start marketing 
that the green update the green update to get sure. a new person because you want you're wanting to oh yeah i do yes. want to try to get out of that yeah but maybe i heard you share say that you're up. still interested in doing it for another year yeah maybe all yeah. right yeah, you really want to share that opportunity with another person <laughs> yes somebody yeah. else wants to go. get involved oh, there we go oh, right. even better it's a very rewarding day right it's maybe my most rewarding day of the year <laughs> I think we should add a cleanup day in the fall as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think so. Oh, and then we can have a bonfire, right, Tom? Oh, I like a bonfire. <laughs> <laughs> more community bonfire. bonding opportunities. Yeah. All right. Any more items or more discussion, buildings and facilities? If not, we'll move on to Lake Iroquois Rec District. And this one, is this, are you going to? Well, yeah. um. Jeff Davis, I'd invited him, but I, I didn't hear back. So okay. um, what he sent me was their overall budget. The interesting thing, um, I'm oh, not yeah, funny, but I that. think it was like 19, 1,925. But actually what, out, what they've been having us do is 2,000. So our original budget request was always 600. But then they added the 1,400 for shared maintenance of the BB um, lane because Will, the town of Williston's always been taking care of it, and they think it should be shared by the other towns, and we don't have the capacity to provide an extra right. highway, you know, to provide extra things, so we um, in, opted to just provide our portion, and monetary portion. So the combined 600 plus the 1,400, the 2,000 is what we've done in the past. Mm -hmm. um, what they're asking, or what I saw this year, but it was showing it was last year's as well, was I think 1,925 on their budget. So I did ask him that question, and I haven't, um, I didn't hear back. I just wanted clarity so to, you know. 2,000. Well, town allocation and And what's, what's the status of the 5,000, was it, for the mill foil? And that's another, I, I that's, haven't. Yeah, that's the Lake Iroquois Association. Yes. Is that what we're talking about? No. This is. No. Yeah, that's, this is the oh, beach. Oh, the Lake Iroquois District. Recreation okay. District. Yeah. Didn't we also <laughs> ask to have a estimate of what it was going to cost to do the road? Yeah, well, I think we did. Like yeah. They just gave us a number. Right. And we said, well, what are you, what are you <coughs> doing for that? And are you, and I think we also asked about what about the other people that live on the road? Shouldn't they be right. providing? I don't think we had got any responses on that that I'm aware of. That was before my. So um, I didn't. I didn't see in this. I already went. <laughs> um, oh, thank you. I'm uh, just trying to be polite. That's been yes, there's anything that's that nice. I could see that was the road. I know I that it wasn't clear. That's why I did re yeah. um, reply to him. I was hoping yeah. that he would either um, respond or come tonight. So I can I can reach out again, okay. and I can also talk to Bruce Hoar um, at the the Public Works Director in Williston, and just to get. A little more information. So, so that line I have an issue with because I think we've talked to him about it before. There's permanent homes in the back. It's in Williston. Um, there's things here in Heinsburg that we take care of through our taxpayers that Williston doesn't pay for. You know, CVU and other things. I I just don't understand why we should be responsible for maintaining that road. I understand it's the beach. But I also know that if there wasn't permanent homes in the back, then that road would be fine when our residents use the beach. So I'm I'm not really supporting of Heinsburg maintaining that road. And I don't know if we ever really got a solid answer as to why we should be with private homeowners in the back. But I don't think, I think one of if I'm um, recalling correctly, I think one of their reasonings were that um, Heinsburg residents are Heinsburg um, are the majority of the residents around the lake. Um, so I think they used that as one of their... But not necessarily but, 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 in that, but, but, that but, portion but of that road. They use that road to access their homes. Those that aren't one. Heinsburg residents. No. No. There was a Richmond. Huh. Are they Richmond? I Is it Richmond? Yes, Richmond yes, residents. Really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Huh. Either way, they're not Heinsburg residents, and it's not a Heinsburg road. Yeah. So I'm kind of opposed to throwing money at their road. I wonder if they're collecting um, state aid on that road. I don't know. 
if they're if it, we should look at their mileage count of their <laughs> of what their roads are or something. Uh -huh. So their request to us was like nineteen hundred dollars. Right. Nineteen twenty-five, right? One thousand nine hundred twenty-five dollars. But yeah. typically, it's been two thousand. Like I said, so I'm yeah. not sure. And it's showing it was that in the current year, which it wasn't. We did. It was two thousand. Mm. So, I don't know. Mm. Assume two thousand. Yeah. And at this point, they're not asking for anything on the road. They did bring it up, but they haven't come back to the. But back this. To us. Well, right? the two thousand includes. It's a 1400 of that oh, is for I the see. road, yeah, our see. share of the road. 600 was all. It's 600 is always what we've done. And so this is the this total current. from all three uh, yeah. or four towns. I, see, I think this current fiscal year is the first time that we had to contribute towards um, the maintenance of the road. And so the $1,400, I think, is showing up for the first time in this current fiscal year. Okay. So we had a 2000 in the current fiscal year. And then, <coughs> um, but it. I thought that, that had more to do with the erosion at the beach than it did in the road. So I don't, I do definitely do not recall chipping it for that road. But. Yeah, no, this was definitely for the road. Huh. Um, it was an issue that that they brought up, and um, they wanted the town of Hinesburg to do it for I think this current fiscal year, and we we just don't have the resources within our highway department to add on that extra, and so. Um, it was either that or provide money towards towards it. The entirety of that road as well as <laughs> right. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. 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 I yeah, just yeah. don't know why we. So this nineteen hundred is between all three towns. Um, I I don't know. I mean, if they're yeah. asking the same of the other towns, but again, the. The 1925 doesn't match what we have. Paid. But the nine, I think this is the, that's the t that's all the towns. This the 1925. Yeah. That's for that's what they're counting as revenue from all three, not from just us individually. But just us individually, we're doing 2,000, or we are in the current. That's so, what was. Oh, I, don't I don't know. I, mean, yeah, that's, I yeah. guess we need some clarity. Yes, yeah. there wasn't For a sure. there wasn't a narrative to go with it. Yeah, yeah. And they didn't explain. Okay, so, yeah, and that's what I asked. Right. Yep. All right. Well, we can maybe. So I can well, reach yeah. out. We'll let them six hundred, which is what we've yeah. done for fifty yeah. years. So. Yeah, they're guaranteed <laughs> that. Well, if it passes. If it passes. <laughs> the next item on the agenda. Uh, Town Administrator, Energy Committee, Economic Development Committee. Well, why don't we pass it right on to the Energy Committee since we have Chuck right here. Hi, Chuck. Chuck, do you want to come you to the Guest of Honor and, seat? Yeah. And you can have a cookie if you come up there. Looking for a reason to get out of the house today, right? <laughs> I've already had two. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> They're very addictive. <laughs> and this is, where is this on the budget? I should know. Um, it's under... It's, Oh, sorry. It's uh, under town administrator. What uh, line in it? Yeah. Uh, let me get back. I'm just opening page. it up. It should be near the top. So select okay. board's the first one, then town administrator's yeah, the it. second. Yeah. Uh, no. My line's got changed. it right here. Yeah. Fourteen fifty is what I see. Is that correct? Yeah. 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 It's kind of in line with what we were. Requ what well, so we requested last year. So, yeah, last year was 13 and, and uh, 1450. Yeah. And that was the first year you were actually a committee, active committee, last uh, year. No, we've no, been for a while. we've been here okay. for a while. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like time flies. <laughs> we've just been quiet. You know, like yeah. yeah, for yeah. the last five. <laughs> I think it has been. It's been a while. Yeah. yeah. It might be five plus. Yeah. Plus, you <laughs> think, yeah. Where is yeah. this on the budget? Yeah. So okay. there should be a narrative in Page your, in your um, Dropbox oh. as well from oh. the Energy Committee that. kind of explaining what each. But not this week's. Yep, in this. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that one was put in last week on Thursday, Friday. What, what number? Yeah, no. I didn't see that I didn't one. see it. It's, it's the same number as it's number five and then it has a letter. B? A, B. Based on where it is on the agenda. We get A, B, and D. D. So yeah, we didn't get a C. 
It's uh, E. E. No, it's no e. e. No E. No? No. Because I have it. If it's up there. Number yeah. five E. It's, and that's from Drop. Well, that's why we're all staring at you with blank faces. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's up there. Okay, we'll look at it up there. Yeah, that's there it is. Got it. Okay. All right. Do you want me to walk through it? Yeah. Sure. Yeah, yeah. so um, the first one, um, this is in response to Act 174, which is the I, for towns to identify preferred renewable sites. And um, it's, it's kind of working its way through the state agencies now. And our energy committee is uh, of the opinion that we, we should actively do this as a town as opposed to letting the state denote what the areas are. So Wouldn't it be the CCRP? It is. The it RP is. Who yeah. would do it? Who would, well, if, it's who know, really been just a mapping exercise that's yeah. basically identifying the places that are, would totally not be okay. It's, it's been this kind of reductionist way of going about doing it. So it's not necessarily identifying, I mean, it, it, it's identifying via mapping just the, the premier sites, which right. are, you know, south facing. And yet we know from a practical standpoint that there's a lot of other good sites. So. And, and their and, mapping is pretty broad stroke. So. I think it would behoove us to be a little more uh, exacting in where we're thinking we would have uh, renewable sites. It also would allow, if we can identify sites, it would also allow us to say we don't want renewables in certain areas. Um, you know, entrances to town or, you know, if you don't want to be looking at the back of solar panels, we could say we'd like to keep this site. So we have the opportunity to, to do that and we can give them input now. Um, they're they're soliciting input from us, so we have in here a budget to um, do some field checking, have some consultants work with us, and then uh, potentially put it out to the public to to if they have a preferred site they'd like to to for us to consider. So I think there's a process that we can go through to identify better sites. What's the date that the state wants this information back, though. Because it has to be in our town plan is the whole... That's right. We have to get it into our plan, and I think it is sometime in 2018, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I think, I, I think it's before this budget comes into effect. I think it's... Before the middle of the year. It's before the middle... I, I, thought, I, it, I thought it was in November of 2018. Oh, so. okay. But I do think... As we introduce this into our town plan, though, it can be um, it can be updated, you know, so we can get preferred sites, which then would allow us to get what they're calling uh, substantial deference, which means that this site's been identified. They have the state has to look at it, the the public service board or whatever they're called now has to look at it, and we can. Um, have more of a role in where we want to place renewables. Well, they can, they can it, it, add incentives to certain sites. That's correct. Um, well, it actually gives you the ability to say no is right. really what substantial deference is. It means that in our town plan and in our regulations, if we have clearly identified the places that we don't want it, then we can have standing before the Public Utilities Commission that's right. Um, to, push back. to push back. Otherwise, if it's not clear in our town plan and our regs, we don't, we can't testify at the Public Utilities Commission. But I also think there's some incentives too. Yeah. If it's an area that's been identified as one that is um, approved by the town, then um, there's, I think, a better rate. Um, I, I would just sort of and, and less hoops to fill. Yes. I think. Yeah, yeah, less yes. hoops. So but, it's good for the developer. Right, but I, you know, I, I look at that, and if you come up with a map, what's the process that you're going to get the entire town to sort of say I agree with that? Because you're going to say here's a good spot, and there's going to be a neighbor there that says I don't like it, or there's here's a bad spot, and you, the owner is going to say, wait a minute, I, I want to do that. So it's almost like a, a, a town plan, you know, or zoning uh, 
So it seems like the approval process would be really difficult. I I, I, yeah, and I, I think that the state is really only asking for um, pretty broad categories, not to identify individual sites. Well, in our we actually sent in a, a couple of sites we thought about. And they, the state basically said, look, look at what we've already approved. So I, I think we're, we're leaving it up to the state then to determine where we want renewables if we don't do this. I think it's, we should push it now and see and let them push back on us. But at this point, I mean, there, what we have done are we've, we've been approached by some people in town already that would like to do a community solar, I mean, a true community solar, not what Vermont Electric's doing up on McGee Hill. And we, we were there, and it seemed like a good site. Neighbors seem all on board. You know, it's not going to obstruct, you know, visions and sights. And I would say that would be one the town could get behind, you know. Um, so identifying those, those sites, however many there are, it's going to take some time. And, and the Energy Committee is willing to do that. And we may even, you know, put something in the front page forum to say if you have a site you're considering, then it would be up to you guys to decide, you know, we'll give you the info and decide whether these want to fit into the into our map. So and if the state pushes back, that's, you know, that's what the state does. But I think as a town, we should be proactive on this. So, but we're, we're being proactive in, in sites that we want to see developed for right. town purposes, not, not doing the work that you know, private private develop, solar developers are going out and finding sites themselves right. of what they want to do. So this would be a way for the town to be proactive in selecting a place that if we yeah. can make it affordable. So and, and if I understand this correctly, too, if we come up with enough sites that actually are good solar sites that, you know, neighbors and everybody's happy with, we can then say we've got enough sites to achieve our goals of 90%. We can say, no, we don't want them here and, and substantiate that we, we have enough sites to meet the goals. This is where we don't want them. So it gives okay. us more lateral movement to, to say no. They don't really like saying no. So <laughs> you got you to gotta make sure you have enough sites around. So. Okay. And we, you know, there are some obvious ones like the town, the old town dump, you know, things like that. Roofs on buildings. There are some public areas that, you know, maybe the you know, people would be okay with having some, you know, solar on. So, but it's a process. And then I think it should be open. I think it should be very, you know, public and that have input. Be yeah, of course, it always is. <laughs> <laughs> but achieving 90% renewables is going to be, you know, by 2050 is, you know, we, we got to start doing this, I think. So, anyway, we have $500 to do that. That may or may not be enough. We're not sure. Uh, number two is the uh, energy day that we always have done for the last four years now. Mm -hmm. So or at least four years old, Phil. Okay. Um, well, then the Heinsberg Energy uh, Sustainable Energy Series. So we're working with uh, Efficiency Vermont, uh, a woman up there named Lee Ling Young, who has actually done a series in Montpelier about getting to net zero. And we're adapting that series it's a workshop and we'll do four of them and it's actually looking at how to take you know existing homes and get them to net zero and how that how that would work starting right from what is net zero all the way up to the whole nuts and bolts of it and then the financing end of it so uh, we're also hoping that we can maybe video some of that and create a video that we can put on the town website and have sort of an ongoing educational effort to uh, to get that you know out to people in town then we have some pretty good homes that have done it that we can use as sort of uh, examples of how to how to do this and then number four is our affordable energy program so this came about with uh, somewhat from the uh, <clears throat> the claims by the uh, pipeline that there are no other options but gas that are the most affordable and we have some data that says that you know solar and heat pumps may actually be um, affordable so we we are working with the affordable 
Housing Committee to uh, sort of explore this and, and maybe put together some um, <clears throat> brochure or something that we can get out to people in town. And they, they would like us to expand it beyond just the uh, mobile home parks to uh, lower income. So we're, we're kind of targeting that to, to the, that. Um, and it's, it's been fun to uh, collaborate with the Affordable Housing Committee on this one, too. So that's our budget. It seems pretty modest to me, you know, dollar-wise. It's a lot of work, not a lot of money. Um, well, a lot like of volunteer I, time in well, there. Well, that's where I was and going with this. Free, <laughs> feel free to add to that budget. This, is, this is where I was going with this, is that absolutely, <laughs> you know. Uh, um, but this collaboration, this idea of more and more I'm seeing, and I know you at um, the two committees, uh, affordable housing and energy, are, are putting uh, efforts together, like on that last one. And the more that sort of... Uh, collaboration happens it also happens on a budget schedule on a budget level uh so you know here you're talking about four different evenings i mean that's a hundred bucks you know it's uh pretty good if what comes out of that is this overall goal of trying to get to 90 percent in you know the way phil and i have memories it'll be like yesterday <laughs> yeah, right. you know it's really quick that this is happening um so um Having a really strong presence of this energy committee and a really active and vital group of people really out hustling these ideas and being proactive, like what we were talking about with number one, I think is really key because that really puts the um, puts us in the driver's seat, us as in the town, in the driver's seats for these kinds of conversations, which, uh, you know, select boards from now, you know, in the future, it's going to be a big pressing thing is energy, 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 you know, and and what we're going to do to keep the lights on and, and move about. Yeah. I think it's really important work. And um, 1400 bucks is not a lot of money to get us there. You know, um, a lot of there, there is some volunteer time, obviously, in that program. Um, Leeling Young has said she would be willing to, you know, not take an honorarium for this. So, I mean, we, we have negotiated some of this stuff, but... It does seem modest, and we may find that next year we may ask for twice that amount. So. Yeah, there's the setup, everyone. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, feel free to add to this, but yeah. we, we are trying to keep this in line with what we were doing last year. And, and there are some things we did this we're doing this year that's not on here, so we were able to substitute. Um, I, I will also say that we, we've got two other individuals that are – want to be on the committee you know we moved it from seven to five now we have two people that want to be and they're they're go-getters you know they're one works at efficiency from on the other one's a solo lawyer so we're we've got a pretty charge it up committee at the moment so they can be on the committee i was gonna say they can be even, even if you don't have well that's what i told them i said yeah. just sit there you might not have a vote but it doesn't matter right. you know we'll, we'll have it You'll and have th that's vote. what they're gonna do yeah, yeah. Um, I guess I have a, um, a concern uh, is that I feel like one of the best ways, examples that we can provide is by what are the, what is the town doing um, in terms of our buildings. And Renee has been really good about getting in touch with Efficiency Vermont. I know maybe you guys went and with, yeah. with, with you guys and um, uh, I was, you know, going over the budget, looking at utilities, and it's right. like we spend a lot. And I'm looking at the, at the new police station and wondering if anything ever <laughs> came of understanding of things, why. Yeah, of getting their system. Why their system efficient. isn't working? So, um, <laughs> if I can talk, not part of the energy committee for a moment. Um, when we were building the EFG building, we were approached. To, our company was approached to come over and do oh. an audit, but I don't know if. That was ever in the budget, but we'd be willing to do that. Well, in Efficiency Vermont, after they left here, they went to the police station oh, okay. too, yeah. and so okay. they did walk through. And I think, um, yeah. I think someone else. But so the, the point that you know you're bringing up, Andrew, is that you know that EFG building is going to be a net zero energy building. Right. And you know, I would love to look at the numbers to see what it made to do that versus why didn't we do that with the police station, or why are we not doing that with the garage? You know, so we have already discussed the garage thing and I got vetoed and I'm not sure why that didn't make it through but that garage really should be net zero we should be demonstrating how we can do these buildings you know put you know put an effort into doing that because then that well, shows the town these can be but, done right but I mean you know so that's a that is a, uh, you know the, uh, the golden ring right that says wow we can do this big building and make it net zero 
but we look at this building and the police station and the fire station and every other public building, um, there's a lot, I think, low-hanging fruit there for Absolutely. very low cost, yeah. and they're not going to be net zero tomorrow or the next five years, but I think they can be made far more efficient. And I, and I think, you know, with proper proposals, um, I think this town would support those um so you know so i think I'm, i totally support all this education and looking at the low income housing and how you know how do they find the funds the small amount of funds to to do energy audits add solar add heat pumps and things like that so what's the what's the path they you know we show them the path light it up and say here's how you can get here let us help you um those are all good things but i you know would be good to sort of it sort of walk the, the talk is like, how do we turn this building into, which Renee, you know, totally supports, as efficient as possible, and, uh, and you know, the police station, how do we do that? And so I'd encourage your committee to sort of maybe tackle one of those per, per year or something. Or, or come up with you've a got proposal a lot of, of, of how we should go about yes. doing our public buildings. You know, what are the steps that we need to do you know, is it is it hiring consultants to do the audit? You know, what's the steps so that that we can start incorporating that into our capital budgeting, so that we're we're working towards that. Um, and along those lines, we've talked about um, a pump for electrical for the electric cars. Would that yeah. be something? Is that something the uh, energy charger? Has been? Yeah, yeah, we have actually right. had a couple of meetings where. Um, Paul Azor has been researching that for us a bit, so we can actually get you know once once we have a um, a cost associated with it, we'll get that to you. But we are working on it, yeah. Great. Yeah. Are you also exploring? It? Are, is there any type of grant funding available for those? There, um, there was something from, from Green Mountain Power. There might be the Volkswagen. Okay. Uh, yeah, yes, yeah. that would yeah. be great yeah. to explore yeah. that. Oh, yeah. We were really also awesome. discussing where in town it should go yeah. and what right. makes the most sense. So, right. but we will get back to you with with our assessment on that. Yeah. Great. So. Even the school is thinking about maybe electric buses. Really, really? Yeah. school buses. Hmm. But I, I, you know, die, but. Um, <laughs> thinking about this workshop series, this four part series. Um, Maybe we can include a municipal component to it and mm -hmm. get a consultant in that does actually talk about that. Because I, I, I think we can, you know, go beyond just making them energy efficient and, and think about how, how do we get these buildings to net zero. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's not going to happen in next year's budget, but it may be something that we, we determine what the path is. And then each year we kind of do incremental things to say, well, th this, is, this is what the end game is. And in, you know, seven to ten years we're there. Mm -hmm. It's better than not planning, you know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so. That's good. All right. Okay. Good. Thank you. We all good? Yeah. Thank you. I think so, unless there's more questions. No? Thank you, Chuck. Thank all you. right. Yeah. Thanks for having me down. Good luck with all your Thank you. Want to do economic yeah. development? Oh, um, sure. Um, let me just pull up. <coughs> So, um, Economic Development Committee, uh, I did talk to Melissa this morning. Uh, I don't think she was going to be able to make it this evening. I think it's I'm not gotten to that. I think they have 3,000. 2,000? Two. Okay, 2,000. Um, I mean, she said they certainly, they're trying, they're still working on using that for this current fiscal year and trying to do as much as they can with that. Um, she understands the budget pressures, and um, I mean, while they would like, to, to keep that and retain it for FY19. Um, they do understand, um, you know, what, what we're trying to work with here as well. So, mm -hmm. but I mean, ideally, they would like to keep it so they can con continue their work. They have um, the revolving loan fund that they've, the committee's been working on. I went, actually had a meeting with Melissa and um, the, the new head of the Addison County um, Economic Development Corporation this morning. Um, so we're just trying to kind of talk about where we're at right now. Um, there's an MOU that apparently may not have gotten processed all the way through. So he's sending me all the documents. So they were the ones who were going to handle the actual process. They're going to handle, right? yeah, they're going to handle the process. They're going to actually 
um, walk us through part of it so that we'll eventually be able to, be able to do some of it in-house. So we haven't really, it's never been completed yet. Well, we haven't had, we haven't had anyone interested in, you know, doing a loan yet. Right, but we haven't even finalized. We haven't finalized. With the Addison County. Right, all oh, of the okay. documentation. Yeah. So okay. he's going to send me all of the documents and I'll okay. send it to an attorney just to review. Yeah. And then, then we can move that part forward. But so they are actively. We need to kind of discuss what other other um, towns that are that are utilizing that are they having the same challenges? And and he said it's not uncommon to it, for it to take a while to you know find it's it's sort of the right type of business. You know maybe just a new startup that are you know that they aren't um, the traditional commercial loans right. don't work for them. Yeah. So you know eventually I think there there are a couple um, avenues that they're they're communicating with right now that's a possibility. Okay, so, so there's need, some activity there. There is some activity there. Yeah. And this, the $2,000, you know, do you know any specifics on exactly what they use it for? Um, some, edu yeah. uh, some educational materials. I know they've published yeah. some things. They're getting ready to do another updated version of the, the flyer um, for the revolving loan fund. They were able to utilize some of the planning and zoning um, budget because there was excess up there and so they were able to do um, cover some of the printing costs I think and and then they out of the economic development committee they paid for postage or or vice versa um, so it'll be similar things like that I, I she did talk about some other specific things um, but they are trying to get a lot of those things done still this year in the with the current budget but um, there's certainly ways to utilize the that money for next year okay. as well she has just stepped down as the chair, oh. just wanting a break. Um, so Andrew Frost has now become the chair. She's that still she's still serving on the committee. I think it must have been just recently. She just told me today. Yeah. So it must okay. be just a recent change. So you can make that, show that on the website. Yep. All right. Um, do we want to just jump into the town administrator? Sure. Budget. Um. And again, this one, I'm <laughs> not really um, making any substantial changes. I mean, there, I, I show um, the 3% in the salary line that I yeah. show in the, all the others. Um, and so obviously the FICA adjusts with those. And I did, let's see, I oh, know that's Energy Committee. So no, I, I think I did a, adjust office supplies just thinking that there's one other mm -hmm. person I only added a hundred dollars to it so <laughs> but I really tried to keep everything minimal the professional development um, added 250 Is that enough? it's not really I mean it's it's a very minimal amount mm -hmm. but in one of the I know it's um, yeah I, I would be you know especially for mm -hmm. The, the first year, two new people, uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. Two new people that we don't yeah. want to bump that up. Right? Yeah, I would agree with that. I, like I said, I kept everything very maybe to a thousand conservative yeah. because yeah. if we're so asking we everyone else to be right. making these changes, I don't kind of <laughs> I want to be modeling the same thing, I guess. Yeah, but yeah, I think but that would be money well spent. Mm -hmm. Yeah, would be yeah, a big return on that. Right. capital transfer the capital transfer um, I have it it's at 5,000 um, and so that's for the stormwater we it, that was just okay. something that was kind of placed under the town administrators line just oh. so that as it's we're starting to get ready for the municipal roads general yeah. permit it's just someone you know to be watching to make sure okay. that that continues to happen and we're building maybe, and maybe we making might, planning maybe, for it yeah we might put a little descriptor in there if that's possible so explain it to me. So that's five thousand dollars for the stormwater storm for the water. roads for the general permit. But that's in that's in the town highway budget. Yeah, the permit is. Well, that's something that we. I, I talked to Mike, and he goes, "Well, I put something in there too." So we yeah. we have um, under capital. We've been plan. We've been saving yeah. for this. Yeah. So for all like the engineering costs and things like that, as we get ready for all of the changes that will um, be required under that. So that's a larger dollar amount that we're putting aside. Um, Mike does also 
have a line item, so right. it's but that's a smaller for the amount. Permit specifically. Specifically. Yeah. See, every year, I think the town is going to have to, to pay re that refund. fee yeah. to the state for our basically our stormwater permit for our roads. Yeah. But this is a capital transfer. What, what, Each you year, know, if we're going to be building a fund for doing some improvements, mm. that that we may, you know, we've been eligible, like the the. Silver rain Street guard. Rain yep. Garden. Mm -hmm. yep. You know, there's a proposal to do, there's a possibility of doing something behind Hart and Mead. There's another um, potential site up at Jolly. Yeah. So there's a bunch of sites that have been so identified. So this needs to be in a different place than the town administration. It seems. I think what you guys talked about is just because it was the first, it was just starting out, just to make sure that it continues to happen, to have a little bit of oversight, you know, just to have someone. Well, so I think that also, it. yeah, becomes the question is, is it, you know, there will be staff time involved sure. in doing this. Mm -hmm. So is it town administrator staff, or is that something that perhaps ought to be an added responsibility in planning and zoning? Mm -hmm. or, we mean, also have, on based now. on the current mm -hmm. staff that we have, a utilities director has stormwater experience, too. So I don't know if that's something that we could, mm -hmm. you know, um, we, we did talk about that with that, you know, higher is utilizing yeah. the stormwater experience right. and so. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I think it's, Fine to be there. I would just add a little descriptor in there. It's just so yeah, you read the line, you know. Well, capital transfer is just, it, it's shown in the other um, oh, budget okay. items, but yeah. when you go actually to the capital budget, you'll it see the summary of the line. FY19 yeah. transfers, and it, gotcha. it does, that's where okay. you get the explanation of what each thing is. Okay. Right, but to Phil's point, you know, um, a month from now, I'll look at this, or next year, and I'll think, what was that 5000 for? But that's when you, because it's a capital transfer, then you go to the capital budget. So you have to know when you look at any of those capital transfers yeah. in any of the budgets, yeah. it says that in, on almost every budget. Oh, capital. I see what you're saying. So yeah. Yeah. you have to look at both documents at the yeah. same time. Ring. Because it's not necessarily a one single item. It, yeah. right. So if you look at highway, I think there's like yeah. 10 items yeah. that right. are comprised. Even in, in the assessors, like there's a capital. Well, yeah. yeah, I know what you're saying. So yeah. that's where, you, if you look at that summary sheet, that's where you, you're seeing mm -hmm. what those are. Mm -hmm. And then you can get in further detail as you go into the capital improvement plan. And it talks about things that aren't even in with that specific fiscal year that you're planning right. for. So, All right, any more discussion? Do you have anything else? Uh, I know, that's... Health officer? Yeah, we definitely want to. Um, that was, that that Where does that show up? It's yeah. down if you look at public health. There's not, um, there hasn't been a line item for it in the past. I don't know if I've now? added it yet or not. No, I didn't add it. So what if you go down to public health, um, let me get to where the line numbers are, 264 to 266, I would just add a line. Um, for town health officer, I, I would assume in that. Mm -hmm. Yep, I agree. And um, so that's the heating and the public health miscellaneous. Um, and um, you, I think you're, so that's, we've got that. So we've never had a budget established no, for town so, health um, officer. I, is Kent going to come tonight? No. 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 Okay, so that's... Um, so that's an item we wanted to talk about. And did you want to? Well, I mean, we have had that? we have had conversations about that and how much time that the town health officer is actually putting in on all the different things. And I, I think Kent's expressed a need to have a deputy town health officer. Mm -hmm. When I did advertise that on Front Porch Forum, the first question was, "How much is the pain?" Yeah. Mm -hmm. And when I said, "Oh, it's a it's a volunteer," mm -hmm. then they were no longer interested. Um, so I think, you know, even just for the primary person that some stipend, some sort of stipend or some sort of something to make it their time for compensated for. for. I think there? I think those are some things that you guys are going to want to discuss anyway um, mm -hmm. of, of what we think is a reasonable. Uh, I think you had an idea when I, I'm remembering you had a, a, a general figure when we talked about this uh, before. Yeah, I mean, I've thrown out some I, um, some different stipend figures. Yeah. Um, it, you know, it depends on which way you want to go with it. If it's, um, 
you know, well, we have two ways to think about it. I mean, we have we have what we have right now. Uh-huh. And then I know in talking to Kent, you have too, that he would love to have another person. Right. Maybe we go there, maybe we don't, but we have somebody now. Right. Uh, we know the kind of hours and tedious detail and uh, professional services that are provided. Um, so as a number, I would propose to put in for this non-existent budget number right now of a, of a number of 5,000 you know, for this budget to consider to start this conversation. I don't, that's, it's that's, it's bigger than I thought. Yeah, but yeah, that seems a lot. Yeah, maybe it does. Yeah. But I just wanted to well, start did, the conversation. Did you have an idea? Am I remembering right? A basic, a basic amount. I mean, and I then think, adding I think if talked, there were additional hours or something yeah, like that. Um, I mean, we you know, we talked about like a stipend, maybe you know, like the comparable ones of fifteen hundred and things like that to sort of align with others. But um, you also look at the time he spent, on, and that's also dependent on what things mm -hmm. are going on. So I yeah, think with exactly. the health yeah. order, there's been a lot Yeah, a and lot I think we also have an individual here who would take on more even if there was less. Yeah. Uh, and that's something to be encouraged. And Marilyn, well. one thing you may be remembering, I did talk about in other towns, like I know Charlotte, they, they created a position that combines a lot of different yeah. Um, position so there's the town health officer I think I think they hired someone that's a town health officer a 911 coordinator um, and a few person. other different yeah. roles yeah a few yeah. other staffing roles and so they're they're there and, certainly more than what we're talking about yeah yeah but mm. anyway there's there's different no I think different it, I options think, uh, I, I think it's money well spent and think about the process that we're going through right now if yeah. we didn't have um, well, somebody. Yeah, I mean, we're fortunate we have is. somebody with the skill base. Exactly. Um, you know, I sort of look at the other stipends that are out there. I mean, the fire chief has a five thousand dollars stipend. Is it, is it five? Is it Maybe it's five hundred. Yeah. Seven, eight, yeah. Eight, seven or something. But significant amount of work there and responsibility. I mean, yeah. um, and I'm not. So yeah, I mean, it, I mean, in, the, and in the past, of... I mean, it has been a staff person who has done that, and we can incorporate it into somebody's job description. That's another way so, to go with it. So that it, it you know, it, it, you know, it's something that we do have to deal with. Is yeah. that a scenario that could that could possibly work, Renee? Um, right now, I mean, I, I, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I guess I would, if we're going to start to consider that amount of money, I would really be looking at, at, um, at how, it, how it becomes. How it gets filled. How it gets filled, yeah. yeah. Not, not yeah. That, I mean, it's been filled with somebody who's can, has definitely got the scale base, from yeah. my experience, and, you know, the wherewithal and all that. So, um, but if you were to provide a, at some level a, a a money or a salary or a stipend of that level or anything, certainly anything more, then all of a sudden it becomes more of a higher than an appointment. Yeah. Um, I mean, I certainly would um, myself approve like a $1,500 stipend without batting an eye because it at least shows some level of um, uh, respect for the time and the demand on the time. Um, and unlike some volunteer spots where you can choose to come or not choose to come, sure. this one, no, we're looking for, you know, we expect you to be there because we need you to be there. So to so. follow that metaphor, if you were to bat an eye and, and say half of that at 2500 would that work? I mean, I'd, you know, I could be talked into it, sure. but I'd yeah. want to hear what everybody else has to say. You know, I, I think... I, I, I feel more comfortable with 1500 and you know and, and feeling like you know we we advertised for this position we didn't say that we were going to be paying a stipend mm -hmm. um, you know I think it happens to be a difficult position um, situation that we're in right now mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure that I want to create more work I don't want somebody to be going out and 
and looking for situations necessarily. I think we need to be available if a situation arises. Um, and uh, I, I think it would, it would really kind of not necessarily sit right with all the other volunteer positions and even with staff positions for that amount of money when it's unclear um, that there's, there's, you know, how many hours is it? Because mm -hmm. um, it, it shouldn't really be tied to the hours, but there needs to be a, a recognition that, that this is a difficult situation that we're dealing with now. Um, so I, I, I guess I'd like to think about it a little bit more mm -hmm. and, and really see how it is handled in other communities. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mary, thoughts on that? Or? Well, I um, I'm only familiar with what the health officer has been doing this year, and I, I hope it's not that level of difficulty and work every year. And if it's if it's really variable, and some years there's not much to do, I think fifteen hundred is reasonable. Yeah, I'm leaning more toward that. I was thinking a thousand to fifteen hundred. And I look at the positions that we hold mm -hmm. and the statements that we get and the hours that we put in. I mean, oh yeah. I mean, I thought of that as well. Lot. It's it's and hard we to do a lot for the townspeople, and <laughs> not that Kent doesn't, but there's right. a lot of there's a ton of volunteers that do a ton of work. Right. If we had to pay them all at that rate, and they all deserve. Right. As I was saying, you know, like that's that. that's one argument you could that could work against you there. Obviously, you know, everybody who puts in so much effort is worth so much more than they're not getting paid, right? Because that's part of what a, being a volunteer. Um, I, I will say, uh, though, that uh, um, anything over what it is right now is an improvement for, for uh, the efforts that we're getting. Uh, and I do know that there's a whole lot more that he could pursue that he sees in his work as a volunteer at the fire department mm -hmm. and having those conversations and how that outreach could happen even more and 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 then to say if there was a deputy like you know you mm -hmm. you had advertised for um it's one of those things you pay forward and you might receive benefits mm -hmm. you know financial benefits um you know on the long term um but I appreciate the conversation because I think it, it is a position that is is do something. Yeah, and I appreciate you you know bringing it up and willing to yeah. step up because this is a year when you know from my perspective I mean, we've seen what someone with the skills and the mm -hmm. um, you know appropriate um, you know wanting to do the right thing as far as privacy and all of that too at the same time um, and it's technical it's technically challenging the paperwork has to be correct right, right personality right individual so the whole thing. Yeah. so it's a good year to see not that Joe Gannon didn't he was the same way right yep, so they both you know we were, we've been lucky to have two um, very uh, dedicated people so I mean, I think maybe what we should do is think about it because we'll come back to this yep. topic. Yeah. Um, if I might suggest, we just sort of put that in the budget to start with the fifteen hundred. That seems to there seems to be some level of consensus that, but I think it's open for discussion some more. And the fact, you know, that we might be looking at a deputy position too, or some additional help. I did want to. Add, I um, did get a text from Al that I didn't see till later uh, when we were talking about buildings and facilities and utility. The um, utilities line on that. The fire department does pay for the old police station. Ah, so uh, okay. It's out of fire. He never lets us get away with anything. <laughs> <laughs> always watching. They pay for electricity, heat, and water for the old station. Well, do we any of us pay for water um, or sewer? That's a good question. I'm assuming. I would. I would hope that that happens. Yeah. No. I don't know. As a matter of. I don't know. I I had that in a question. Is what does utilities cover? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Um, well, I, I, and if you heard me, I said water, sewer, electric. And right, so but the, I, I, I when I was looking at all the other town budgets, I was looking at theirs, and they, some of them had water and sewer budget items in, in each of the individual departments mm -hmm. uh, because they have different buildings around. Yeah. But I'm questioning whether mm. we're, you know, that, that's been a question also at the schools about how we bill them for it. So uh, Al says we do. <laughs> they do okay. pay for the water yeah. and sewer. All right. <laughs> yes. Would you ask Tom, uh, Al, should we do cemetery next or select board? <laughs> I think you just asked him. I, I'm waiting for the response. <laughs> the select board, I guess. That was one to discuss. Um, yep. That's at the beginning. Yeah. Time, right? <laughs> As you guys sit here for so many hours, long hours. Um, well, the, the meetings are easy. The first time. The other stuff. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, obviously, I didn't make any adjustments, but I think it's it's. What number was it? Sorry. It's in the first so one. Yeah, four, it's four, a very four, tough four, one. Four, so four, number one. Thank you. Line number two. Um, Just noting that secretary pay here is nineteen hundred for. At least two meetings a month, if not more. More, yeah. That's a good point. As your comparison draw right. you're making. Yeah. yeah. We're having a hard time keeping it filled. <laughs> I know. There's the turnover. It How many years has it been here for you? Too many. Yeah. <laughs> more than two. <laughs> She's applying for the conservation. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's the book that I'm going to write when I'm done. When I'm done. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the fire and the fury. Fire and fury. <laughs> <Right. laughs> oh my! We've got our comments. Wet rags and yeah. damp sponges. Yeah, right. We're, we're all very stable geniuses. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. 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 So I think that's something we should definitely consider because you guys do spend a lot of time here. And um, which one are you saying? Just the select stipend board. for the oh. select board. Yeah. Well, we can't do that. Yeah. It has to be a motion from the floor. We can't yeah. set our own. Wages. Oh, really? Yeah, that's, oh, so, so that has to be so, a town meeting. Yeah, Ken. Ken Brown. Yes, he's one usually. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so that that's. I, I mean, I'm. Patrons have all select board members. Um, I'm I'm fine with it. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm okay with it. Yeah. If the town really wants it to change. Listen, but I'm fine with it. Attorney fees. So that was a hard one. I yeah. mean, I'm really, I'm really trying to be careful with it this yeah. year, and so I'm watching it. We're still, I mean, we're we're staying within reason, um, but you know, just with the health order now that it's going to be, be right. filed, that can change things pretty That'll quickly. Mm -hmm. yeah. Hannaford, with that I coming back, Hanford. that's going yeah. to um, increase that. So it's hard. I, yeah, I probably didn't give it the real number that it should have i mean it's hard to what know makes, what that real number that is makes, i mean just to just to say something what if we doubled it and then we uh worked with that number i mean is it is, is the idea that we should be on the high end not the low end when we're in this process here well, I, I mean know, i think I we know should put well number, you know but, the but, best you know. number we can come up with right um I think being I would as conservative say hopefully, as possible. Hopefully, but. fiscal year 17 was higher than normal because we did have some extraordinary things. Uh -huh. um, but those were all things, of course, that could happen this year. I mean, they, they just could. happen. Right. You know they could. I mean? So yeah. we have no. Well, where are we at um, this I year? I don't have that right now, but we, were, we aren't tracking too far um, off. Too far off. Yeah. So I think. Based on this year, I think everyone should be around. Fit, we're about fifty percent through. Mm -hmm. I think it was the last I looked. We were at fifty-two, maybe okay. something like that. But again, on the, same number. the health order is just being filed yeah. now, and so yeah. then that that's a long, drawn-out process um, that will require some. You know, we'll get some uh, bills for that. And what's professional services that was? Professional engineering. Wait, which? Yeah, yeah, that would be. Um, oh yes, yeah. So that's when we, you know, hired. 
Um, yep. Tyler. Tyler Billingsley yeah. for um, different things. So Baldwin Road was a big use of, of okay. that I mean, last time as well as. Do they have such high costs for that in the future? Um, I, you know, I didn't, I didn't put a large figure on it. I am, I don't know. I, I, that's an, again something I want you guys to discuss and think about and think about what's coming. Um, is there anything that you're foreseeing for FY19 that might drive that number up or the need? I mean, be curious to see, you know, so we use them on the intersection. Mm -hmm. um, you know, be curious to say, well, how much did that cost? Connector road. The, the connector road. Yep. And, you know, I don't, there'd be, and then uh, up looking at McGee. Right. Right. Oh, so, right. Yeah. I mean, yeah. if we look at it and see how we're running, I mean, it, 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 you know, having a resource like that, it doesn't, it, you know, we've got now have an agreement with that company, but mm -hmm. it could be others. But, you know, we have somebody who knows us and, you know, if, if we're within what we think the budget is, I would expect we'd continue to have, you know, those kind of technical questions. Mm -hmm. And it's helpful to have that um, and not, you know, not wasted the thing that we're really fortunate about is just the close proximity right. he is to us right so yeah. he's yeah. also very available mike can reach out to him mm -hmm. and he can come yeah. take a look at something just to kind of yeah. confirm what mike's doing and think you know like i just want to have you check this and it's not so two hours of travel time yeah. 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 yeah he's really good about yeah. that as well so um, it's so. just so a I question, think the question of, is it the right amount right. right do we need a budget for more and and ads and notices is another one that's Quite Ads higher than what was that's budgeted. A hard one. I mean, we've had a lot of vacancies, and so they all go to oh, the, that line item. You, okay. You know, with the highway, main, any of the vacancies we've yeah. had are charged yeah. to that line item. Yeah. So it, you know, ebbs and flows, but we've had some yeah. <laughs> flowing of that. So I would encourage you, Renee, to put in really what you feel is um, an appropriate number. Uh -huh. You know, and you know nobody's going to get beat up because they. Because the um, you know attorney fees went over because it's going to be obvious to us why it did right and, and they won't be things that we have much choice about. I think we're somewhat diligent on spending mm -hmm. so um, you know I would encourage you to take a look at it and yeah. make sure you feel good i i I think the profession the um sorry the um, uh, Oh, no, the one we were talking about was it on the last line item? The attorney fees? No, the uh, professional development. Oh, for the town yeah. administrator. Yeah, for the town yeah, administrator. Yeah. I would oh, encourage yeah. uh, upping yeah, that, that. Oh, yeah. a little bit. Yeah, yeah. thousand, fifteen hundred something. Yeah. So that. Yeah. Um, if there's yeah, an opportunity, yeah. particularly having mm -hmm. a new employee coming, yeah. you know, together, both of you might find an opportunity there. Yeah. And I would assume if you guys go to the LCT mm -hmm. uh, things that it would come out of that. Right. Yep. So. Yeah. Definitely agree with that. Again, I've been very, um, been just trying to keep, because we're asking everybody else to yep. tighten up their budget lines, I didn't feel like it's, it would be right for me to be putting substantial increases in, <laughs> at, you know, at the same time. I'm. Yeah, but at the same time, request. it's like... <coughs> These are investments of they're, they're investments yeah, right. in, in that in that office yeah. and um, you know they've had a long time to develop their budgets and know what they are right and um, I I was I was um, it was very instructive to look at other towns budgets for individual departments and, uh -huh. yeah so um, I, I, I and, and keep in mind I mean, this <coughs> is the plan right you know going into this right so yeah this was it's expected. It's not uh -huh. right. some strange ass. We do. I think we all really appreciate that you're a really hard worker. Uh -huh. and you will work yourself to the bone, and you'll just stick with it until it gets done. And we, we really want to support you. We're very grateful for what you do. And this is a way of supporting you to make uh -huh. your work even better. Yeah. Appreciate that. So you should not feel bad about right, that. Right, right. The professional audit, that's the uh, mid-year booklet? That's the, from the auditors. Yeah, so I forget the name we're of the wanting company. to... Um, but I know the one. Fa I was, yeah, Fogel. Fogel. Fogel, yeah. 
Um, I just want to make sure that's what that number yeah. is. Yeah, but you guys had wanted to do an RFP yes. for that yeah. for this year, so yeah. I've got one that I'm, um, you know, getting ready to. I'm going to send it to okay. Missy and Joan yeah. to to look at and then um, decide when to put that out. So is there any way to know if we're going to need more engineering services from Tyler in the in the coming year? Are we just kind of shooting in the dark with the figure? I don't, I don't think we're shooting in the dark. We, we don't no. have any big projects that aren't covered somewhere okay. else. Okay, good. Um, but we do I mean, something think will things come will come up yeah. at right. some point like it did yeah. last year. And I guess that's how I would think about it or how I do think about it is what over the last several years what kinds of things have come up and well we just came up with three things exactly yeah. those kind of things and, and then will come up again something will come up so the discrepancy between what was budgeted and what we paid is that going to happen again that's my concern yeah well, we could be more judicious with what we do the mcgee hill thing costs a lot of money we it was a negotiation but probably we could have said you know what we don't have the money for that this year you're going to have to wait uh -huh. until next year. So, you know, that's under our control as well. Okay. Timing is what you're talking about. Right. Yeah. yeah. Anything more on the select board? So the last item is cemetery, and that's in uh, line 270. I've got the, I don't think I have the latest one, but it's about 270. And I actually didn't talk directly with Glenn, but uh, via, e via voicemails, oh. a couple of voicemails. Um, I talked with Mary Jo. Oh. <laughs> Let's see if you got the same message. Yeah. yeah. Um, there was some, uh, I think they have talked about trying to pull the whole mowing contract into one and they were a little unsure whether that could be done you know well they have separate contracts when it turns out they have a mowing contract um mm -hmm. with wall but then they also have a contract it's not exactly a contract with wall for digging the uh graves but that money wall charges uh the town because there's no no the, it's a contract, I think, with the uh, funeral, funeral, home. Sir, yeah. funeral home. So I was thinking Interesting. I would like to see that, that, that if it's $100 that he's charging for digging the grave, what's the funeral home charging the client? Oh, yeah. Um, so, I mean, but that's up to the cemetery commissioner's yeah. To, to to sort that out. But they have come up with a policy that they really only want Wall to be the contractor doing that. Um, I can understand. There's so some thinking, I'm sure. I asked. Yeah, my uncle can do it. <laughs> um, well, I'm sure if people wanted to go and dig their own, dig their own by hand, they should be able to. Um, uh, so um, I, I asked Mary Jo whether they would consider wanting to put the whole thing out to bid with the town. And, mm -hmm. you know, they're happy with Wall. I said, well, would you just bring it to the rest of the commission? And you guys talk about that. And the other thing is, is inc I encourage them to be considering what capital projects they might have. And, you know, she started listing. I said, well, you know, just make that list and bring it to us and you know we can work on assigning numbers to it not that we're going to do them but instead of it becoming a crisis 10 years from now we should is, we yeah. should know what these things possibly are so i think they're working on that and they do have a certain cemetery fund for when people buy their plots but it and it's invested but it's not a big windfall mm -hmm. <laughs> I was hoping so they the, Missy has those books and she pays for certain things yeah. out of that account like the the markers for the which is separate from our, our yeah, yes budget, that yeah. comes in for cemetery reimbursement yes to us but that's minimal it's minimal it's just the interest on 
some of those investments. But then certain things do get paid out of that count, like the the um, the um, corner markers mm -hmm. for the yep. graves, and um, hmm. you know that's that was what I gathered Maybe from my conversation good to get with Missy. Here sometime and tell us their whole process. Well, I think they're they are learning it themselves yeah. and trying to. So that I, I I think maybe next year that might happen. Yeah. Okay. Because there's some erosion problems right, in the right. cemetery. Yeah. Yeah. And there's the fountain and there's. Yeah. <laughs> right. It's a beautiful spot. At least is, that one is it, a beautiful it, spot. Yeah. Yeah. And there's okay. you know there's a lot of graves that are in, in some of the oh. other cemeteries that are. In district, <coughs> yeah, but it's unclear. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, that wasn't the reason why I was doing that. Because this is interesting. So, um, who are, there's three of them, right? Mm. Three Glenn. Three commission. Mary Jo Grace and Jerry um, Helen. Helen Belial. They're the two newest members, right? Mary Jo and Jerry. Yep. And and they're trying to get some mapping done up there and figure out where the graves are. Or whether there's enough room. Mm -hmm. And there's potential for other land. So is that 30,000? Is that a closer? It's been around 29,000 for that. Are we still on around that same amount or for them? For they, the well, as far as they know, um, uh, the, Mary Jo didn't realize that it was coming out of the tax dollars. Oh, uh, that's right. You said that. Yeah. Okay. So um, they're happy with Wall. I, you know, I, I, I kind of looked at their contracts. One of the contracts with Wall doesn't have a deadline on it. It has a start date, but it doesn't have an end date. <laughs> Um, I can't remember whether that was the cemetery commission one or not, but huh. okay. so I, I think we should <coughs> ask them to look at it and okay. they could talk directly to Wall and <coughs> Okay, anything more <coughs> on budget? Do we want to talk about the process going forward now? Or? Sure. So I think what I'd like you guys to decide next week, um, well, first, are we planning to meet on Martin Luther King Day or do we need to find another day next week? And then second, are you guys available and interested in doing a longer budget work session starting like in the late afternoon and kind of working our way through, taking a break for food? Pizza or whatever you want to have, and then and, and not just for food, but to get up and the, stretch. Absolutely, yeah. no. I agree. Yeah, look at the stars. Absolutely. Or um, the sun, if we do it during the day, right? <laughs> <laughs> or the sun. Yeah, or the sun. Or the sun. Yeah, 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 some real numbers that you're considering cutting or things, bring them into the conversation so that they can speak to the impact that has. Um, yeah. and, and because that is something that I... That will help us. That will help in general, and it'll help... Um, that would be um, well received by them. I mean, it's going to be a hard year, and they know that. We've, we've talked about it. Mm. Um, they're not excited about the thought of having to cut their bare-bones budgets but they would appreciate being part of those conversations and being able to explain when you're looking for big numbers what those big numbers mean to their budgets and um, what the what that does and what the impact is so <coughs> so i guess think about if it is monday um what well, would i think be so that's one question martin luther king day i mean we've been meeting on martin luther king day since i've been on the select board i think it seems to fall and I don't know. Always falls on a Monday. Yeah. We and so, um, it's always in January. Is, so. Yeah. Is, well, there we go. First time. <laughs> so, is that an issue or not? And if it is, we could, we'll have to find another day that week that Town works. Open that day, right? Staff regular it's, or, I mean, no. technically, it's not a, it's, a yeah. it's a national holiday, isn't it? Yeah. Or a state? It's a, I mean, national, it's a national holiday. holiday. National. I know New Hampshire didn't recognize it for years. So that's why I thought it was a state holiday. So, I mean, 
I'm okay with moving it, and I, I'm just looking at my schedule. You know, if we want to meet next week on Tuesday instead. Tuesday, is that? So DRB. the DRB is, um, is that a, well, they're first and third Tuesday. So they're probably not. It's probably an off week unless they change their schedule and adjusted it for anything. It's, it will be the third Tuesday. Oh, it will be. Does anybody not want to meet on Monday? I'm available. I'm fine. Yeah. I'm okay with it. I'm just trying to be flexible. VCAM and had reached out um, at the end of last week just to confirm that we were actually meeting on um, on Monday. They said, "Is you know, we we can't afford to lose a meeting right. And, right. unless someone has a need wants to adjust it." So. So we meet early. I, I don't have any um, other obligation, but I don't I don't feel really good about meeting on Martin Luther King Day. In a way, it feels a bit disrespectful. Well, if we didn't meet Monday, um, and Tuesday sounds like it's out because that's a DRB, uh, that leaves us with... Um, I'm not available Wednesday. Lisa's leaves us a Thursday or I'm Friday. I'm not available Thursday. Yep, so Lisa's leaves us well, Friday. Let's just meet on the Monday then. I just... I, I'm with you on that. And I think yeah. maybe next year, you know, I think when we started to plan these nights, we could we should have we start taken... start making a holiday, yeah. those types of yeah. things to recognize. Yeah. So, um... Can we all meet earlier that day? I'm thinking, you know, we meet in the late afternoon, have a little break in between. Um, <coughs> we could all go to the yoga class. <laughs> I guess it all some depends good. on what we're, where we think we are on the budget. Mm -hmm. So. Um, we've gone well. We've gone through every item at this yeah. point. Right, but so I mean, in terms of. Actual, like how are we going to use the time, right? The extra time. So um, we're a little over six cents increase over last year. Um, well, uh, there are other things that we can that I'm still looking into of way to find savings. I'm re I'm reached I've reached out to the auditors to find out what exactly our unassigned fund balance is to see if we have um, if if we've gotten that. If we have the minimum seven and a half to ten percent range is what you guys have decided mm -hmm. is sort of that range we want to keep, which is mm -hmm. you know highly recommended. Um, but if we're above that, what do we have to work with? And so I'm I've reached out. I've gotten an initial response. I wanted clarity on that before I um, make any recommendations on on if we have. And then there's still some revenue numbers too. There's um, so I'm. Missy, it was going to work on the revenue for the solar trackers to show how yeah. we can show that. Um, so that's not included on there right now. So that's a, um, a, a check that comes back from Green Mountain Power. And it's it credits, credit. it's, it's credits, a, yeah, but it's, it's in the credit. form of a check. Right. Yeah. It's a credit. And then um, depending on how you're, um, actually, it would be a, a complete credit that would get applied to the other. Um, bills. Right. I think there's there's a little funny so it because it only happens once a year. No, uh, it doesn't happen on each. No, year. it should happen. I'm not sure. There's is there's is the only oddball get. one in that because it's going to um, the wastewater treatment and then because it can't go to the wastewater, it has its own little meter and then so then they turn around and they give the town the credit for it and then the town can apply it and I said I would work with Missy yeah. a little bit we had some discussions on it and I was going to pull out the budgetary numbers that were developed for it so we'll work on that and uh, come up with and I have that number you know here's what we can expect for income I think problem was it was January to January not June to June mm. so for a year it's okay but because it came in and September or whenever it happened or whatever mm -hmm. you need to sort of look at each month So I will I will work with her on that. So we have we can plug that number okay. in. Yeah, that would be that's one missing piece um, that We haven't had yet Here's a so couple my, things that I would like yeah Just so we can at least explain the budget uh -huh. is How much of it is attributed to insurances? 
How much of it is attributed to our debt load? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And how much is actually increasing in salaries and what we're actually spending for day to day? Right. Service. I think that's going to be very important to show. Yeah. I mean, that I can speak to right off the top is, you know, debt service is the primary driver. Right. Um, so just adding the um, highway garage and the solar trackers when we still are pay paying on the police building. So those are three that are shown in debt service. Um, you take that out and we're, you know, quite low. And then once you, then you take out the um, first payments on the vehicles that we're leasing, that's the that's the next biggest piece because of the two of the most expensive was the dump truck that we had to replace a year early because mm -hmm. it was a lemon all the way through and was out of service more than it was ever in service. And then the loader we put off in a previous year to save it in during that budget year. And then it came on for this one where we already had um, other ones. So so those are the biggest drivers. Um, workers comp did increase. Um, and health insurance increased, but outside of the um, debt service and the the vehicles for the capital transfers, we're really, you know, pretty close, right on. Right. So it, it's just those right. alone are really the drivers, the yeah, biggest drivers. I think that's drivers. important for any negotiation that we may mm -hmm. have, and how much time yeah. we're going to spend yeah. trying to trim the budget. Mm -hmm. Right. Because, you know, you can only trim so much and have people doing their job, whereas the taxpayers voted for the town garage and these other things yeah that's kind of has to be the expectation and that was the frustration that i heard from the, the department heads i mean we all are fully aware of what what is driving this yeah. and these were decisions that you know i mean the highway garage costs more today than it would have cost two decades ago it wouldn't be we'd be having it paid off you know closer Almost to being paid off. off you know and so not all of these things would be happening at once it's right. you know it's all a matter of of you know saving for today and then it's cost more later down the road and so those are things you want to take into consideration when you're looking at this you know are you really wanting to take funds out of paving or because is that going to cost more to get it back on track later i you know you know just those types of big dollar amounts that you're going to be looking mm -hmm. for think about the impact and that's why it's important to include the department heads when you are having those conversations and it's better to have it early in the afternoon so we're all thinking more clearly and really thinking through those um, thinking through those decisions so but the biggest drivers I mean if you take out I could I could do a sample for you and show you what the percentage is or what it would be if we took out just the you know the debt service alone just the two the solar trackers and, and, the, and, it, and it would be and so where so we're at I'm not sure if any of the debt dropped off in the last year. So, um, the, but one of you the fire trucks did, did yeah. take out so, of debt service. I so, think. but you could look at the in, you know, the percentage increase. So, debt uh -huh. increased ten percent, twelve percent, whatever it might be. Uh, insurance increased ten percent. You know, whatever it might be. Those would be. That's yeah. I think what you're saying, Tom. Be good to at least you know instead of these buckets of you know the highway department this this sort of that sort of bigger picture of like here are the bucket the other buckets and and you sort of show that and then and then it says hey this budget isn't you know isn't necessarily um reflecting uh you know big increases in all of the departments it's right. it's you know these other things that were voted in um so i mean i think that that would be worthwhile and your yep. mem your memo or your email yeah. sort of reflected that so and i think if you want to expand on that yeah. that would be helpful because yeah. that sort of sets the yeah sets the mood on where we are i absolutely will have a lot more information for the next um, meeting I think I wanted to use this time to keep finding ways of what we can do to offset that yeah. because really the biggest drivers are things that are outside of our control right. or things we can't we can't go back on. So you know, those decisions have already been put in play. But but my my thought and we took Renee and I talked about this briefly, so it's not necessarily Renee and our and my approach that you know. So I'll just sort of say here's my thought: if Renee, if you were able to sort of you know get some of the final numbers in and get it to us as soon as you can each of us should be looking at it and saying are there any opportunities there are there any anything we want to sort of question or believe that we might have and and um you know if you want to either you could send them to me and or renee here's some suggestions that you know i'd like to explore and um 
maybe we hit, you know, from, let's say, if we were to start at 4.30, and that's just an option, and sort of, you know, block off some time that says, okay, highway department, 4.30 to 5, you know, police, yeah. 5 to 5.30, fire, you know. So some of the bigger ones, we, yeah. we do those and with the different departments, so maybe there's probably five of them that are the big ones, and uh, block off some time just to have some discussion. That's when we bring up, do we, you know, can, is there an opportunity here, is there an opportunity there? That department head has a chance to explain why yes or why no or whatever. Uh, we can discuss among ourselves exactly, you know, do we feel that it's a appropriate? We're almost running out of time. It's an, op it's an opportunity. <laughs> Um, and then, uh, you know, we could follow up on the other ones that we haven't necessarily touched on, committees and the smaller ones during the actual meeting, because mm -hmm. we'll have some a block of time in there to talk about those. And then at that point, you know, we may have come up with some modifications or changes, and we'll certainly have some clarity. Yeah. And going into the final week, which would be, you know, are there any other last-minute changes we want to make? Yeah. And I'll have the question answered on fund balance availability or not. By um, next week, you by, think? Oh, yeah. By, I think okay. by tomorrow. Yeah. Um, and, I, I mean, I did look to see, I when I looked at where, um, when we did the cap, when you guys approved the capital reserves in June, July, or whatever, I looked where we ended on June 30th of 16 or 17. Mm -hmm. And um, it looked like there were some capital reserves for paving. But when I went through that with Joan, it there isn't. So, I mean, once I was able, I thought, okay, I could use 50000 in capital reserves, not impact our pavement schedule, mm -hmm. but save the bottom line. But that one, I had several different scenarios that didn't come to fruition today, but the fund balance is still a possibility. And you were going to look and see about um, whether there's any money in the impact fees. Yes, there isn't. Yeah. There I isn't. Tried that. Not enough to offset the debt service for the police station. So that was one of the things I was looking at oh. is um, to pay that FY19 payment on the police station with impact fees, but they don't have enough of a balance remaining to. But couldn't we use it for? Uh, Apply some of it? To, to, to do some of it? It doesn't have to be the whole amount. Yeah, I'm trying to remember what was left. Um, I think it was under 20000 or something but yeah I mean we could certainly yeah I mean that's one use that is absolutely appropriate for okay. impact fees yeah like so, so part of the it. yeah so yeah. I think it's 76,000 is the payment yeah. for the one-year payment so I mean we could apply the whatever the 20,000 or, or to the connector road <laughs> yeah I mean that that will be something that's in that's this, in this year, year. Well, that's yeah. right yeah 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 yeah, yeah. Money is money. yeah. 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 so so I don't know I'm too interested in starting that early next week. I, okay. Yeah, I have kid duties as well as uh -huh. this duty. Mm -hmm. So, uh, what is our drop dead schedule for getting the budget? So, actually, we have to utilize that last January meeting because by state statute, I looked at the town warning, we can't warn it too prior early. to, yeah, I think January 25th is the earliest to be <clears throat> warned. And so the January 29th meeting would be when we would finalize that. So we have the but eight. That doesn't mean we couldn't have the warning done before. We just yeah, we can have it. We, we and just can meet yeah. for only a half an hour. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> yes. I mean that ideally yeah. we, we would be. Um, so, so we I have, have the draft. So I see three more January meetings and three more Mondays. No, three really, only two. two. I mean that 29th one. It has to be done. We're signing right, the we warning can, yeah. that day. Yeah. The is right. Set. I'm so, saying we could utilize it if we had to, but I don't think we're in that position. No, I don't. I don't think well, we, we could can. have. We could force more budget work in the next two weeks and put off other things. I think what you're saying is there really, and what we've learned, there really isn't a lot of um, room to play here. These right. are things that are already set in stone. So that's kind of what I'm saying. Um, I, I I'm trying to look to see if there's any other ways of offsetting it, like. A use utilizing a little bit of fund balance to you know offset the increase um i you know i didn't find it in reserves i didn't find it enough of it in impact fees but perhaps we can you know pay a little portion of the that with there so mm -hmm. i think those are the types of things that are really going to make a difference if we want to try to avoid um 
cutting services or impacting a future fiscal year by saving now. So, Tom, are you are you questioning whether we actually need to meet additional hours? Or are you just yeah. saying that, okay, it's not just that it doesn't work for you on Monday. You, you're questioning whether we really yeah, need to. Yeah, I kind of feel like that. I've been through this now five or six times, and it feels like there's just not hardly any contention, really, as to what the numbers are that I'm seeing. I just don't see a whole lot. Yeah. I mean, I, I, there's a couple of things that, I, as we've gone through, that I've sort of put away, put to the side, and said, well, I wonder mm -hmm. if we can do this, I wonder if we can do that. And for do you, me, it would feel good to, now that we've got the big, you know, big picture, and we'll certainly have the big picture, um, to like go back to them um, and and then really ask the question, hey, is what about this and and or this? Not you know every item, but there might be one or two on some of these big budgets. Just to sort of make sure that I really understand it and that there isn't an, another alternative. I mean, I'll put out a couple ones. We've we've got a proposal from the police that says you know they'd really like to have a bump in their salary. Uh, and I don't, I don't disagree with it, and and or another proposal about um, longevity, uh, right? Which also both of those make sense, and and um, so you know maybe we say yeah those are good ideas, but you know I I think during that time I sort of floated well maybe we do half this year and half next year, mm. um, so there's a couple of those things that you know I would like to just have that discussion. Be able to bring it up, have a discussion, and s see how it feels, and also get feedback from the department um, head. And you know, um, they, they might shake their head. Oh, that seems like a good approach because they're getting what they want. Not this particular case, but um, or they might say, ah, it's just not going to work, and here's why. And it's like, okay. I think um, my computer died, but yeah. I, uh, the, on the police budget, I think their overall budget increased by a little over four percent from last year, just uh, just mm -hmm. over four. So, um, as a sort of a general transfers. question for all of us, though, is what is our goal here? I mean, are we trying to bring a budget in even again from last year? Are we trying to x percentage off of even? Like when we're thinking about cutting, how do we know we've cut enough? Are we just cutting? What the solar trackers and the how a garage cost? I mean, how, I hate to, I hate to, yeah. you know I hate I mean? to think of it like that. As much as like I would what, like to cut, but if we're just if we just kind of go through and make judgment calls on things personally that we want, you know, this could go, this could go, this could go. Let's have a conversation and see what wins. Um, what, what are we getting at? Is it just just to cut something? I, I mean, I think what I'd be getting at is. I'd be presenting a budget to the town that I feel 100% confident in. That, you know what, we questioned everything and this is it. And, and, you know, so that's it. I mean, my goal going in here wasn't necessarily to level fund. Mm -hmm. One of my goals was I want to make sure we're not um, shortchanging, saving a dollar today. Sure to pay $4 next year. Yeah. So, um, so you know, I think what Renee is, is articulating quite well is that, um, you know, you do have to be careful that when you, you save a dollar today, you're not, you know, you're not wasting <clears throat> it. And so um, I wouldn't want to do that. And that's why it'd be good to have the department manager here and they can explain why if we don't plot, if mm -hmm. we don't, um, you know, do the entire paving, here's how it might cost you more. And we'll have all of the revenue numbers as well. Um, I, I think the only, only number we're missing really is the solar tracker revenue. Um, and then, I mean, we... And the fund balance. And, and the, the fund, fund balance. balance, yeah, absolutely, for yeah. if we want to apply so, any fund so balance to. So I guess what I'm asking, that that's the whole picture. We'll have a yes. complete, yeah, yep. okay. Yep. And so, then what I was going to have on today is just the little... Um, to show what the impact is or what the increase would be yeah, on a, like a two hundred thousand dollar sure. home, yeah. hundred thousand, two hundred thousand, four hundred thousand. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I just ran know, out of time today. And how much a penny is? Yes, which is right. Just standard. Usually, standard. it's around fifty to fifty-three, fifty-two, whatever or something it is, like that. just so we get yeah. an idea. Um, 
you know, there might be other things that that department managers have said, I wanted to put this in, but I didn't. So, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, I mean, we're looking at it and saying, how do we trim it to get it as affordable as possible? And um, there might be a couple of trade offs. So I think, you know, what I'm hearing is Tom, it would be difficult for Tom to meet earlier. Um, I guess what I'm saying is it would be helpful for me to go back through, now that we've gone through it once, to go back through it again mm -hmm. and sort of say, you know, are there any questions? Are there any concerns? Um, does it all make sense? Um, are there any opportunities there? And if not, we just move through it. But have the department, you know, particularly on the big ones, have the department manager here so that we're not, you know, talking over them. And, you know, maybe we start a little bit earlier next week and, um, you know, focus a couple of solid hours on the budget to see if we can get through through this second sort of review and then, you know, take it from there. Would having an extra session on a Saturday morning, say, be a possibility? <laughs> well, we want to get the department managers here, too, so... Hey, can we... Go ahead. How much of a problem would it be, Renee, to have, if we have certain questions about certain departments, rather than springing on the department head at a meeting, just more forward some questions to you, mm -hmm. say, you know, whatever the question is, what's the impact of this? Uh -huh. And then have them prepare it, and then we'll just flow into the meeting, and they have an idea of what we're thinking. Or just questions we have. Yeah, I think, I think it's, it's better to get the questions ahead. Oh, yeah. 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 I mean, I started doing that today yeah I remember. <clears throat> um, yeah and I think if there's um, certain ones that you're things you're considering yeah I mean you know have those questions in re ready so that we could direct them to whatever department okay. if that's yeah. if that's the approach you want to do I think it just makes more sense than starting early uh -huh. yeah because if we don't have the questions ahead of time then it, it means that we're just asking those questions and maybe Maybe everybody can answer them on the spot because they should bring their budget sheets with them. Right. But um. Well, maybe they have to think about it. Yeah. Exactly. I think it's going to be important too to show that where, what the impact of so little growth is. Uh -huh. I really. Yeah. So I, I started, really do. I started putting that together, the grand list and how it's changed over the last ten years, and then I got to last year, and there was this. Huge jump, and I thought, oh my gosh, we did something. Yeah. So I went back to look tech, but it was the reappraisal. Yeah. So yeah. that looks yeah. like the outlier. Yeah. I woke up in the middle of the night. I thought, okay, I got to check the tax. <laughs> when we set the tax rate, did we, you know, make something? But then it was yeah. react, and then I, like, okay, it was the reappraisal. So yeah. Yeah. even though that looks like a significant it's, jump, it it's not. It's, it doesn't. Really. It's meaningless on that one. But it's so yeah. <laughs> there, there's been minimal, minimal growth. But I can, I can also have that. But there's kind of true in all the other budgets that I looked at today. Uh -huh. You know, I looked at Richmond's, at Williston's, Shelburne's, Charlotte's, Bristol's. How can there be little in Williston? <laughs> well, Williston, it's interesting. Their property taxes doesn't, I think it's less than half of their grand list goes towards um, um, their budget because they have a local options tax. Right. They have a uh, uh, host town. They have revenue, right. other revenue sources. That we just yeah. don't have. Right. We don't have. Yeah. So, so they're yeah. hit with these same large increases. It just doesn't have the same impact on them because yeah. they have other revenue sources right. or larger than we do. So. Right. so I'm hearing Tom saying, let's, let's keep at the same time. I'm I mean, suggesting. 6.30. You want to go a little earlier? Work if people want to start early, but. I, I feel better just knowing that we have enough time and we don't go to 11 instead of so, yeah. so I can I can be as early as the group of sites. So is that, can make it is that all right with you, Andrea? Yeah. Yep. All right. The department heads come no, back in the evening. And no pizza? Do no. I don't know. You guys better <laughs> talk yourself out of that. <laughs> agenda, I guess. Yeah, yeah, I we have to meet at 530 to have pizza. Yeah, no, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah really, what, you guys what, blew it. What else do we have on the <laughs> agenda? So the only other, well, again, my thing died, but the other things... We need to do the certificate of a highway mileage. Oh, yeah. So standard thing. That right? doesn't necessarily have to be done. I think the I think its deadline is in February. But at the same time, the connector road really needs to go on to our thing. So we need to name that. Are we getting suggestions? So there are some suggestions. 
um, not maybe not necessarily um, some that everyone's heard of, but but yes, there are <coughs> there are some names, suggested names. Well, that's a quick that's yeah. a quick one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. it sounds like we don't have a lot. I, um, is it okay? We'll meet at 630 then? I, that'll work. All right. The and other then, things, the UP, UPWP, so sure. the second time. Yes, it should be right. Quick. Yeah. And then uh, would you be able to, and I'd be willing to help, just sort of divvy up the budget like you did here for this for this uh -huh. review and maybe try to hit the five bigger pieces and block 20 minutes or something in, in for each one. Yeah. And then you're suggesting everybody, you know, take a look at the budget, come up with suggestions or questions, and just put them out there. And then maybe, you know, we can have a sheet that that you collect all the questions, yeah. share them with the department managers. And if they have answers ahead of time, they can give them to us for the meeting. Or if not, we'll talk about them. Do you have some specific departments that you definitely know that you want to review? And uh, I think highway. Highway. Please. Please. Um, Believe it or not, some of the commissions actually this yeah. year are ones that I'm questioning. So highway police. Well, uh, we had Alex asked just... to see if there was any revenue possible coming from the fire department. Right. Yeah. But I don't think there is. Okay. I mean, I, I mean, I did have some communication with the association president, yeah. who reiterated that the fire association revenue does not impact. The town's budget. Um, my feeling is is that if there's association money going into the running of the department, then ultimately um, it could fall it, it onto does the become budget. a cost of having the fire department. So they do. Ha um, what I read in that, so they they have a do a treasurer's report at their yeah. monthly meeting. Yeah. I mean, and anyone can attend that if. You're right, for that. but Ooh, I, but I feel like that should be. I mean, we should understand uh -huh. as a as a town and as a board what um, you know what it's costing for the department to operate. They operate very effectively, right? Um, yeah. But it 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 it's um, it's perplexing to me to understand why why we. We couldn't have a similar um, relationship as we do with the library in right. terms of their, their funding, other funding sources, and even the. So maybe they could do that same sort of treasurer's report here. I mean, I mm -hmm. could that be something that they they could. So we have four then so far. So what I heard you guys say is highway police fire department. I that's three. Planning and zoning. I think Alex will be here anyways, but yeah, I'm just sort of taking a look. I think that might be worthwhile. We should have a discussion uh, about um, pay rates. We've, mm -hmm. You know, right. we put three percent out there, but we haven't really discussed it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so that's across the board. Too. And that would be, I think, something you would. Um, uh, make a proposal of what you think would be the appropriate amount uh -huh. and you know what you might base that on for right. me it's always nice to look at what the cost of living is and mm -hmm. um, maybe what other, well, others are doing because in a, in a way you're competing to keep your people here versus I, get you know hired by Richmond I think the figure that we were looking at um, is the governmental I'm blanking on the name right now, but it's for FY19 is 2.9, I believe, and so that's that's kind of what mm -hmm. um, that's been our the number that we always look at each year. So that, that would be good to bring that in, yeah. and then you know that can at least um, you know, for me it can hang my hat on if that's mm -hmm. what we're basing it on. And then we could have a discussion about the insurance. Yeah. You know. Um, so. Insurance. I mean, we don't have a lot of control over no, that. Right. Just but to understand. You know. I think I, I mentioned to you in the um, email that you know while the workers' comp is up really high right now, we're 
trending in a better direction. And um, so in FY20, we might get some good news on that end of knock on wood <laughs> somewhere that, you know, things continue to go well. So you've seen the mod rate improve a little bit. Yeah. It takes a little it lags. Yeah, yeah. It takes a while once you get, you know, have some big significant ones. It takes a while yeah. to, for that to come off. But um, the feedback I've been given from um, VLCT Passive is that we're actually, they're, they're seeing us in a very positive light. Um, we're, what we refer to as being becoming a model community and one that they'll use and talk mm. about in other discussions and good. That's, yeah, that um, is good. So, so I think, uh, sorry, I didn't mean no, to I think that. all the yeah. staff has bought into it, and I yeah. think you know we've got the safety committee going. We've got trainings that are happening, and just everyday discussions of just to, you know making sure we're being aware of safety. Okay. Um, should we move to until we've decided six thirty? Yeah, I think we did. Yeah. Yeah. Town administrator report. All right. Yeah, um, some items in there. Yeah. So I already mentioned for um, one of the upcoming meetings of as we need to look at the certificate of highway mileage. I think there were some roads that have been missed on it in the past. I don't know if you've talked about that before. If we have everything accounted for, um, but it. I was, well, we thought I was remembering. And Creekside? I don't know. See, those were the yeah. ones I was thinking about. I don't know. We have to look at and see. And then obviously the connector road. Yeah. Um, and uh, so that that's one of the things. <clears throat> um, the the UPWP we're coming back at the next meeting, mm -hmm. and you guys are going to think about it, decide what you want to support. Um, there was a water leak that was found at the end of last week in the bitter cold and so they decided to wait and do the work on this morning um, and that went well um, and they got it repaired it was a service line and so that's they didn't end up having to shut off service to anyone beyond that and it's repaired and and taken care of uh, the one I recognized the hard work of you know the highway department and all the people that have been out you know plowing our sidewalks and doing the um, shoveling and the parking lots and all of that because we've had while well, we haven't had lots of snow we've had just an incredible amount of just those continuous, that, continuous cold to that, I, would, I would also acknowledge that we had town staff working on Christmas morning and evening and New Year's absolutely mm -hmm. holidays I was holiday. thinking about that myself yep on Christmas yep yeah, so I've done that. Um, it's not fun. And one thing I'll chime in too. I saw on Facebook the other day on Saturday there was a bad event in, up on North Road. I think yeah. it was Saturday, maybe it was Friday. Friday. Fire. Fire. House fire. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I, I read on Facebook that people were pr proud of the town road crew because they went, they s apparently saw the smoke and they plowed. Up the driveway so that wow. knowing that the fire department yeah. was coming so i think yeah. our highway do, i mean i think they do that i think they really yeah, work they in good coordination yeah. with the fire department and yeah. the police when there's things like that so, so we have that's a good job i think kudos to a lot of yeah. our different departments in that regard and maybe that can be part of the front porch forum post the about recap the select board yeah. yeah i was gonna ask that yeah um Essentially, the thank you is what you're saying. Yes, yes. And, and kudos to the incredible road crew we have. All three of them. Yeah. Yeah. And we probably need to say something about the Black Rock Agreement. Mm-hmm. We do have another highway garage meeting in the morning. So I'll find out what the progress is. I think they've been managing to keep moving on even through the miserable yeah. cold. But um, yeah, I think it's been <laughs> it's been rough. But they've I think all the walls are poured and they've continued to kind of keep marching on. So we'll get an update tomorrow. Um, Anything else for town administrator? Yeah, tell me more about. Um, the naming of the connector road what is that all about i mean i know what the road is but like it has to be named for 911 or well, something well i mean or? it's it's a paved so eventually it's going to have to be repaved and you yeah. know and so in order to get um access to paving grants and you know you, it has it. to be part of that in our 
Um, so are we going through a process or is, is it just going to be somebody says it's going to be called this? And I mean, typically it's um, on just regular naming of roads. It's, it's been, you know, the 911 coordinator, but sure. because this is a town road and added to the town list, um, we felt like the select board can, can weigh in on it too, if you. So we're weighing in as in giving suggestions or, um, or there's, somebody else's? There's been some suggestions. And so, I mean, I can, I can bring those to you guys. Please um, do. Yeah. 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 So. And so, uh, is there a deadline on when that has to be made, that decision, or you're just anticipating that? I'm just trying to coordinate it with a so specific highway mileage, because we, yeah. if we want to have it named, I can add it to that yeah. list before we have, I think it's February. That, well, it's um, also all the due. town roads have a number. Mm -hmm. Yes. So yeah. it can just be town road. 22 or whatever right. number it is. Or whatever, whatever yeah. yeah. I like no name lane. <laughs> <laughs> well, there, yeah, I mean, there's some... Um, humorous names. Oh, I'm sure. Humorous. I can think of a few. Yeah. <laughs> right in front of the police station, Weed Road, but that's hard to take. Well, you could borrow the sign like other people That's have. right. <laughs> yeah. um, Are so. you the one that steals that sign? <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, and then there's some other names that are honoring um, some folks in Individuals. town. Individuals, yeah. But it yeah. could be something as simple as park or park lane or something yeah. like that. Right. Safety yeah. lane. Safety lane. Right. right. So. Sesame Street. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. We can have a okay. few choices for you. Sure. Okay. Thank you. Anything more for town administrative report? <laughs> so I'm just as bad as the rest of you. Select board form. Eighty-six hundred dollar profit from the Quadra uh, event. Think. Numbers were down a little bit, obviously, due to the cold. And yeah, I would say the proximity to uh, New Year's had an effect, but more the cold than anything. The turnout was actually better than we expected, I think, and everybody had a good time. Andrea won a quart of firewood. Wow. Ah, I, I did on a quart. Actually, Marilyn and I did. Yeah, <laughs> I, was, I was bidding against her. Yeah, we, so we decided we'd split it. <laughs> no pun intended. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're gonna get Lynn Gardner to split. Oh, there you go. There you go. <laughs> oh, that's good. But it's the. I think she was bidding against Cheryl for that. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> I heard about that. Yeah. It's definitely yeah. good. Uh, good auction items. Good music. Nice. Yeah. Really good food. Yeah. yeah. It was a very fun time. Yeah, it's the first time I've gone, and I, I just think you did a really nice job. It nice. all felt... Not just me, but... Yeah. Well, the whole group, it just felt fun and upbeat and really well organized. Everything seemed so smooth. Yeah, you yes. definitely put a lot yeah, of energy into that. And I yeah, I guess. <laughs> That's how <laughs> they have that system. Yeah, that was good. Tom Giroux came in this morning with um, more money from the bottles and cans. Mm. So I think he had another... Two or three hundred dollars worth of oh, yeah. bottles and cans money. I'm Thousand doing my right part there. on that. <laughs> I haven't had the deposit coming in too from the event. Just oh, yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. Money comes in later, yeah. So. All right. So I have a couple. Does anybody else have any select board form items? Well, were, were we going to talk about other things to go on the posting? Well, I thought we did, but. Yep. So I have uh, four right now Black Rock budget process, budget meeting. Town garage construction continues, and uh, a shout out thank you to town staff. Okay. Those and I items. want to probably put an update about the Quadra event. And yeah. The, yeah. Um, sure. The 8600 that was raised. Yeah. And All right. Anybody else? So I had two items. One, I wanted to personally thank Aaron for keeping the list of activities for the year. Oh. I finally completed my report, town report, and I'll send you the draft, I think, Ooh, to I take a look at it. I didn't send you one of the nasty, oh, threatening no. letters. So I'll send you the draft, <laughs> okay. and uh, I'll get it out tomorrow. It's already been sent by registered mail. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, I, and I was going to save a small section to have a, or somewhere in there we, we need to have like a little budget review, sort of a discussion of the budget, uh -huh. I think, somewhere. Um, you know, it, some, so we can talk about that. Okay. So the, that could be. It doesn't necessarily have to go in the select board one. No, it doesn't. It's just sort especially. of an overview, you oh, know? Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, So yeah. I've seen, I think maybe Jonathan yeah. was doing that. Yeah. And I was like, how does he do that before, you know, it's finally worn? So there's probably a little section we might want to do that. But I'll, I'll send it to you okay. and then everybody else will have a chance to take a look at it. Um, but 
Aaron's been keeping uh, an ongoing list every month of the activities. But just as something so, will come up, I just right. He just throws it point. in the Google Doc, and then so I went right to the uh, Google Doc over vacation and said I had written a whole bunch of stuff and I tried to keep it chronological, but there's yeah, a bunch of stuff uh, at the top. And I so yeah, yeah but it was good. So it was like oh, I forgot about that and yeah. I forgot about that, and I was able to go back and look at all the minutes and. It was it was helpful. As we've so, established, we don't have good memories. I right. Think, uh, <laughs> so I, thank you very much, I think Aaron, for doing that. Good to utilize that for town meeting. Even as people are gathering and sitting down, there could be a, on the projector screen, just sort of like a little you know events yep. that happen, some pictures yes. that kind of go with it. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah. Um, and then you know talk. I'd like idea. to. Yeah. You know, just as people are walking in and telling like a slideshow. Yeah, yeah, some like slideshow that's yeah. kind of moving through right. pictures. Yeah. And maybe a good idea. And is there anything ahead of us this year? No, yeah. all the okay. schools not even oh, meeting okay. on the same day. They're right. meeting on a completely different okay, day, so we are the show. Oh. Do we have photos? Um, I mean, I used to always collect them when I was doing the town report. This is the first year I haven't been collecting them all along, but I'm sure, um, I don't know, if have you guys collected Pretty any? Sure I have a couple. I know yeah. Jen's giving hands, so I'm going to believe. Yep, yeah. yep, we'll so she has some a... through the rec, um, yeah. different, you know, rec events. I, I think, um, you know, we can put out, the word that the word for from other pictures yeah. Yeah. looking for that because it and could use it for the town garage report. a couple of those yeah so mm. yeah so i have one more i guess do we ever i know we've made a decision about the town report no we haven't finalized that have we finalized it because andrea came up with the numbers i i've seemed... been working with uh, um that company um but i'm i haven't i keep reaching out i'm not getting the actual i'm looking for a real real numbers right. so I know what to work with. Um, so I've sent them all the PDFs from last year so that they can see just one to make sure that they can they can work on that and it sounds like they can um, and they need like a two week or so turnaround time which you know that so works. Everybody's for, town report. Yeah that I know so we're year. barely going to be yeah. um, but I just I'm looking for that number just to make sure that we can fit within I mean I think we can safely fit within our current budget based on what the, the number that they gave Andrea mm -hmm. um, early on I don't, I don't think we can be that far outside of that because you you gave the basic um, thing so and this would be printed on newsprint with a little harder stock for the cover is that that was that my was understanding the... right yeah so Great. and mail to everybody and mail to everybody that yeah. would probably be the biggest expense so I'm just talking to them trying to get I gave them what our um, permit number is for the to get the you know our postal rate and then um, seeing if they can do the same thing that um, we our other printing company did and deliver it to the post office directly and and that way we don't we don't do anything it just goes right out and will we still have or we would pick up recycles so we have copies available yeah yeah so we'll work. still have I'd still put recycling bins at the post office and everything and um, then just keep and we can all bringing us going to the post office. Mm -hmm. well, I'm, I'm, I'm there every day, so I'm oh, right. perfect. Yeah, perfect. Help you out with that, okay, yeah, that was my little regular thing. So yeah, that'd be great. Um, so, so I think I'm pretty confident that it's going to work out and that it will be able to fit within our budget, and it'll be a good thing to try this year and see what the feedback is. Thank you. Andrew. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I think that that so, works. So hard to know the language, right? Yeah. The printing language. The printing maybe? language. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And being, sh you know, being sure that we weren't going to get the same format as the grand list. Yeah. Yeah. And and it is hard. It's hard for me because it's a very different. So they're different. So yes. we have it. The communication piece has been a little challenging. It's still right. got it worked out. I think I've gotten enough of the details to know that I think we got this. <laughs> but it's it seems a little uncomfortable that we're this late in the game without knowing completely sure. But it sounds like we are. So I think we're. I think we're good. How's that? She's she's just waiting, and um, I've been you know just yeah. kind of coordinating all the pieces, and so she really hasn't started anything yet until we have all the pieces together. So. Okay. Anything more for select board forum? Minutes from December eighteenth. We're in our packet. Yep. Mm -hmm. Is there a motion? I'll we'll like approve the minutes of <coughs> December 18th. I'll second and, and comment. Um, 
So uh, this is something that I've noticed once in a while that I'm often able to help you with correcting. Um, but getting better at, uh, let me give you an example. Um, under library, the sentence starts, Paul and Sarah presented the budget. And so what I'm looking for is who's Paul, who's Sarah, and what's their role. And then as you reference them later, then it's Paul and Sarah. Okay. So just adding, adding last, last names and titles where appropriate. Not every time, once, and then. And then the same as uh, acronyms. So we all know NEMRIC, but maybe that's one to sort of spell out and then acronym it. The rest, Regional mm -hmm. Planning Commission is another one. You know, like we all know the lingo, but to that's a, that's a good label comments. it all out, parentheses, and then acronym it to the rest. Um, it just makes it easier to read. Mm -hmm. It makes it a little more um, accessible to people, yeah. perhaps. Probably those who aren't as familiar as we are with yes. those yes. things, with it's helpful. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. Are you yeah. looking to amend this one, or is this a suggestion going forward? I would amend this one. Okay. Yeah, I would just do so it right there. So the motion would be to accept the minutes as amended. As amended. Yep. 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 With all, the oh. with all the appropriate places you think, you know, what I'm talking about. Um, just to miss Carl... Bullen from affordable housing is it's with a C. Oh right, yeah, I did see that actually. That is Carl. Let's see. Um, I would say though is that whenever you mention one of the select board members, we're all fine since we're labeled at, at the, the top yep. as attending the meeting. You know, just to say us by first name. I was going to say some some minutes get really yes, formal yes, and do, do, you know, I was at that select today. person, you know, <laughs> you know, et cetera. No, but that's not that's not what I'm getting after. Right. Any other comments? Thank you, Aaron. All right. All those in favor with the minutes as amended, say oh, aye. Wait a minute. There's oh. one. Okay. The concert was on January 5th, not January 6th. <laughs> Okay. That maybe that's what the low attendance. Yeah. Uh, -oh. Yeah. Uh, -oh. uh oh. Well, I was saw that. Ooh. <laughs> oh goodness. Everybody showed up the wrong day. Yeah. It says January sixth. Yeah, it was the fifth. It was the fifth. Oh. Oh. Oh, geez. People showed up on Saturday. Well, if they did, they're out of luck. Yeah. They're at a wedding reception. Right. Somebody's gone. <laughs> Somebody's wedding reception. Oh gosh. <laughs> okay, one more minute. Um. Uh, yeah. All right. All those in favor, say aye. 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 None opposed. So the motion passed. Consider approving the warrants. I'll make that motion for you. Second. Any discussion? Uh, there is one more payment in here from oh. Thursday. Just a one page for. Uh, those that opted out of the insurance, they get an additional oh, payment that was out of oh, health did insurance. I see, yeah, I know. Did I see that, though? I don't no, think I, I just They've been opt out, and it, was there a clothing allowance payment, uh, too? I didn't notice maybe? that. Oh, okay. But, um, so I think she mentioned that. So, Have you seen it, though? Yes. Okay. Um, all those in favor, say aye. 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 None opposed. That motion passed. We don't need any executive session. Um, any other comments? Next meeting, 6.30 Monday. 6.30 Monday. Here. Here. Yeah. Same no place. Pizza. No pizza. No, we have made it 5.30. You deserve pizza. <laughs> well, we should. Is there a motion to adjourn? <laughs> yeah, right here. Yes. Second. And seconded. Let's do it. All those All in right. favor, say aye. 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 Thank you. Motion passed. That's right. Thank we you. could meet at 5.30 and have pizza for an hour. Sure. Sure. Pizza. Can make you pizza bites.